watch Buckaroo Banzai and then tell me which I think he's great. <laughs> Buckaroo hey. Banzai and the Eighth Dimension Eighth, or yeah, Twelfth like Dimension. Dimension. It's something weird. It's great. It's a great movie. All right, we are lives. Soy live. But yeah, so I want to. I want to. I want to uh, reach out to the chat room about Buckaroo Banzai. <clears throat> What's the what's the impression? <laughs> we are uh, alive. We are alive, barely. <clears throat> call me Bumps. <laughs> hey, Bumpy. <laughs> hey, horse trainer. Have you seen Buckaroo Banzai? The movie from like the eighties. Trying to make Jose watch that. You know what I have to watch that I haven't watched? They Live. Oh, my God, no. What? No. I got to watch that tonight. While okay, I'm that's one, deep two. in my in and out Oh, one, no, I'm going to try the taco, the taco. Yeah, you got to you got to I'm going to Sounds like you have a great night ahead of you because <laughs> yeah. you have Pio <laughs> Mico's amazing tacos and a can't lose movie, Buckaroo Bonsai or They Live. I, what's take it, They man. Live? Leave it. Oh, my God. That's a uh, is. No, they live is Roddy Piper, Roddy Roddy Piper. <laughs> uh, I'm, he, he, I'm only good he, at two things. things. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm. No, no, no. I'm here to do two things: yeah. chew bubble gum and, and kick, kick ass. And I'm yeah. all out of bubble gum. Exactly. Yeah, I, I think I remember this one. That was 1988. Buckaroo Banzai was 1984, and it's Buckaroo: The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai Across the Eighth Dimension. Yes. Hmm. Ooh, man. Right. Buckaroo Banzai is a, a rock star, and he gets sucked into a, a, the, another dimension, and yes. he's got to save the he, world. He drives a truck through a mountain and picks yes. up some aliens. Yes. Oh. oh, it's the best, dude. Oh, yes. Oh, oh but, yeah. And, hey. and the, uh, the, the, the Ellen Barkin was in She that. was smoking. <laughs> smoking I mean, she's hot. still, she's still, she's like 60 and still smoking. Uh, she's at her peak in, in uh, Ellen Barkin movie. 2022. Uh, or, uh. Would you, would you take a 1999 Ellen Barkin? I don't even know who this is. <laughs> just watch Dude, I'm just Buckaroo watching, Banzai. I'm just watching the to, the trailer here. We're going to put this up here on live. <laughs> just, <laughs> oh, look oh, at that, dude. Wow, it's so that. good. Oh, my God. Oh, dude. There's is, aliens in this movie, What dude. is going on, bro? You got to see. <laughs> it's amazing. You got to play the trailer for They Live. Dude, you... Those are my probably top two B movies of all time. Hey, there's Robocop. Yep. Exactly. He's Buckaroo Banzai. Like, what a sucked in face, huh? <clears throat> oh, yeah, that's right. The aliens are Jamaicans, dude. They're <laughs> fucking Jamaicans. <laughs> there's uh, Ellen Barkin in there. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, it's so good. Oh, that uh, guy. Uh, that, um, that what's his name's in it? Uh, uh, what's his name from... God damn, it's so bad with names. We can't hear anything. No, I I have the oh. it muted. There's John Lithgow. Yeah, John Lithgow. He's crazy. Um, um, God damn it, from Independence Day and um, Bill. Uh, hands up. What what does uh, Robocop say? Hands up, uh, punk. What does he say? Oh, maybe maybe tonight. Whoa, yeah. Whoa. that's what I'm talking yeah. about. That chick. Look that, at that, dude. Um. He, oh, he does all the commercials. Yeah. He, he's everything. He, he's the best at everything. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, wow. God damn it. He does all the commercials for like rent.com. Um, John Lithgow. No. I mean, uh, Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum oh, is in yeah. this. Yes, yes. A young Jeff Goldblum. Yes. Pre Jurassic Park, Jeff Goldblum. Yes. He was in. Uh, Jeff Goldblum was in uh That guy right there's been in a bunch of stuff too. He's uh he's always like a cop or something in a movie. <laughs> Jeff Goldblum was in that uh what movie was that? Clockwork Orange, right? Ah, Jeff Goldblum's been in almost everything, dude. Or, no, 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 he's got no, no, well no, no, no. before his He story. was in uh What's that Charles Bronson movie? Death Wish? Death Wish when they rape when they rape his wife? Jeff Goldblum. I, Death He's Wish, young, I saw. Dude. I think my grandpa made me watch that when I was seven. <laughs> like, you watch this movie. Like, You're going to learn right. about what a man's supposed to be like. All right, grandpa. 
He's kind of a shitty husband though, because there's like three death wishes, and they all invite <laughs> like, his, 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 every his, wife yeah. every time he gets married. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, honey. I don't oh, know if you know I, the history, yeah. <laughs> but you're probably gonna get mutilated and raped. I apologize. It's in the vows, though, so uh, she knows. Yeah, it was in the prenup. See, there he is, Jeff Goldblum. That's nice. another one of those guys that looks like a smart guy, but he's an asshole as well. He gives off that that vibe, yeah. Oh, classic, classic movie. Jose, watch both those movies. Uh, uh, start playing They Live, like they the trailer for dude. They Live. Yeah. Oh my god, that premise of that movie is so good because he somehow he stumbles upon like some sunglasses and then he can they're, see no, yeah, like, reality. Yeah, well he sees uh, what the aliens. I remember you talking about this. Yep. Oh no, they live. <laughs> god, that's such a good movie. Yeah, it's Spielberg. It ain't, it ain't no Spielberg film, but no, this is the. So apparently this isn't the trailer. It's just a oh, it's something like a, else. Nah, just go on YouTube. Dude. Oh, I just watched that Escape from New York uh, yeah. a couple like a month ago. <laughs> great, just great. That that's another great B movie. You ever see that Escape Snake from Snake Plissken? Yeah. Okay. So you know. <laughs> What's the one with Steve Buscemi? Is that the one, or is that L A. Escape from L A. I think that's Escape. I from think LA. he's Escape from L A. Yeah. There's this dude. Kurt, uh, Kurt, uh, not Kurt, Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell rides a fucking tsunami. Wave, yeah, bro. I know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> but you know what? There's like a scene where he has to make shots from uh, like uh, a basketball court. Oh, I know. And you know he actually made those shots. Like okay, they, but they that was like a legit. How many hours they were fucking? There well, yeah, I know. <laughs> but it took. He, he actually made those in succession. I read that. Yeah, but that scene where he's riding that fucking tsunami so fucking and, like, and Steve Buscemi looks back in his car. It was like the worst like CGI. CGI. Yeah, no, it's horrible. It's just like, bro, what the fuck? But is it's going good on though. Day? Like, look, I look at those times like, well, that's what you had to do if you wanted to show a guy surfing down like the normally dry L.A. River. I think, <laughs> right? That's what the premise was yes. for whatever yes. reason. It's, there's a, a wave running down it. Uh, Good stuff. I saw. Oh, I went to the. I went to the movies on Saturday. I saw John Wick Four. Did you? No. Oh. Have you guys seen it yet or no? I no. All right. I'll be honest with you, but I don't feel so bad because you haven't seen any of the fucking movies we were just talking about. <laughs> I've only seen John Wick One and parts of John Wick Two. Okay. Um. And I liked them. Uh, there was no. I have no. If complaints. you like those two, you'll definitely like the fourth one. Okay. <laughs> it's like. They're like, let's take it all to eleven, dude. Like everything. Nice. Just, they put all the switches on the board to to max, and yeah, it's good. But that's the thing. Like, if you go into a movie, you kind of know, like, this is gonna get ridiculous, and I don't care. But I just want escapism. I just want to yeah, see dude. some cool shit. <laughs> I went. <clears throat> I went and saw uh, Super Mario Brothers. How I'm, was that, dude? It was good, dude. It was totally good. Did uh, what's his name? Pull it off. Yes. There he is, Chris uh, Pratt. Yeah, Chris yes. Pratt. Yeah, we. Uh, it's a me, a Mario. So the the you know like you heard everybody like you know ripping on him for the thing. That that Italian accent is for one minute. Yeah, but he has like more of a New Jersey accent. Yeah, in this. No, 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 but it, it it they do it. I I think they went back and redid it. But oh, kind of like the Sonic. Did you ever remember seeing the Sonic movie when it first came out? Kind of, yeah, yeah. No, no. My boys love those. I'm saying movies. that I think. Hey, what's up, Nestor? We're talking what's about up, Super Mario Bros. Um, <laughs> Just here enjoying the show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that they went back and record re-recorded that segment, but it's the whole his bad accent is him and Luigi are filming a TV commercial for their plumbing business and they're pretending to be over the top Italian. Yeah, but the rest of the movie the move, it's just normal. The move should have been keeping that accent. Yeah. 
What's up, Case? We just we just, Nestor just we haven't even started. We haven't even started yet. So we're, uh, we're right. we've been live. We've been watching. Uh, we've been watching trailers. Whoa, whoa. For... hold on, hold on. So of the 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 following B movies, which one should Jose see first? Because he hasn't seen either. They live, or Buckaroo Banzai. Hey, I'm, I'm hoping... going to go with Buckaroo Banzai. Okay. That damn okay. really. Dude, it's great. It's they're both. I, I don't great. know either one of those movies. I just the, the name oh Jesus, they're classics. They're uh, Let me, Nestor. Do you have an opinion on either of those movies? By chance, I don't know. I was watching your little trailer show here, and I was like thoroughly impressed with Park Room. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so are, I was like, I've never seen this shit before, but I was like, hey. uh, well, so, he didn't play. The, you got to play the trailer for They Live, dude. Uh, no, we're we're beyond that. I think that I think that what we need. Are to, we? I, I don't think so. Just so uh, Nestor has yeah, some well, context of what see, we're talking about. Exactly. We'll talk. <laughs> After, um, I I think we need to try the uh, watch party thing again with uh, another uh, movie. We just try. They live. <laughs> Either one of those movies are a winner, hundred uh, percent. How are you doing, man? Uh, I'm here. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. We just. Fixed a busted water line in front of the house, yeah, and uh, it sucks. Yeah, are you still that was not fun. From hammers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, apparently hammers is just following me. They just wreckage everywhere. Just might as well just wreck the fucking house while we're at it. <laughs> All right, we'll uh, we'll roll right into it. You know how this goes. You've done it uh, yep. a couple times. Who's, who's trying to get in here? Brad Overly is who's Brad Overly? Is he with you? Brady, yeah, Brady he's Brady? he's my co-driver. Oh, okay. I can't have my sunglasses. I don't have my, my glasses on. I can't see. Let me use my improved <laughs> eyesight to tell you. <laughs> um, what's up, Brady? How you doing? Um, I see what happened, Nestor. The, the email that you put in the invite was wrong. Uh -huh. It was uh, misspelled, so I kept sending it to that email. Oh. That's why you weren't getting it. No wonder. Yeah, my, my bad. Well, you, I didn't you notice just, it. Just right. autocorrect your stuff, and it will be fine. I just, I just noticed it. I just noticed it. Auto what the? Auto what the? Uh, all right. So we are, we're already live. Uh, we already got people watching. Um, and you guys have done this. You know what's going on. So we're going to roll right into it. And uh, when we're done, when we say, all right, thanks. Have a good night. Don't hang up. We'll talk some more. Uh, so I'm going to kick it off right now. Three, two, one. Hey, everybody, it is 6.45 on a Tuesday night. We're usually live at 6.30. Uh, but we, we, were live. We, were we're live. Live. we were live at 6.30. For those of you that joined on time, you got some um, good we talked insight. about Buckaroo Banzai, They and, Live, yeah. Ellen Barkin, and, oh. a, and a Robocop, <laughs> and a bunch of other... It all uh, started with the Robocop. Yeah, a bunch of other movies. We, we watched keep some talking about Ellen Barkin for a long time. We watched time. some trailers until Nestor showed up. And then Brady showed up and now Brady's gone. So I'm not sure what happened, but we are joined. I don't know. He, are, he does not like those movies. I don't think so. We are joined tonight by uh, the Camacho Motorsports guys. Uh, how are you doing tonight, man? Uh, I'm here. I'm good. I'm good. So we were just talking that you are uh, struggling with a busted uh, water main at home. I'm sorry. That sucks. Yeah, that sucks. I mean, you know, get, long, get home from a long day working and then, you know, I was Probably wrenching the ex on the Xero for a little bit. I got home. Like, right, I gotta take a shower and bust the water line. I'm like, oh god, next three hours. So yeah, I finished about two hours ago, and then uh, I am just so here now. Sorry to hear that. <laughs> yeah, finally I'm in. You're, you're in, Brady. You good? Yep. Okay. Cool. Cool. You you got off that McDonald's uh, Wi-Fi? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, that's just the laptop. I had to switch to my phone. The uh, if so, that's pretty nice McDonald's, I think, that you're sitting in. Yeah, <laughs> dining room, so yeah, um, okay. The so, for those of you that uh aren't familiar with Camacho Motorsports, uh, we had these guys on. I'm trying to look it up right now. We had these guys on um a while before, like uh, I want to say six months before King of the Hammer, yeah, and then uh, again couple weeks before maybe even a week before king of the hammers and i think the last time we talked to you you had uh you had said you were 20 percent done and you had like 12 hours to get the thing on the trailers so, <laughs> so um, 
I, I think that's a recap. And and you guys did a great job documenting documenting like the, your the whole, whole process yeah. of getting from Florida to the Johnson Valley <laughs> Desert. Uh, but for those that haven't seen it or followed you on uh, on Instagram, which you should go follow Camacho Motorsports, talk to us about um, that whole process. And Brady, can I ask you to go on mute if you are not talking? Uh, thank you. That, but uh, you guys had your own adventure just trying to get across the country. So let's go back to you got the you got the truck on the trailer and take us from there. All right. So, well, we couldn't even get it on the trailer in the first place because the whole trailer broke apart, like right before uh, we loaded up on the truck. I mean, the, the whole spring tried to fall apart all out of the the trailer the whole axle try to get out of the trailer like we were backing it up uh so a little bit of misfortune we lost a day trying to pack the truck on the trailer so we had to repair the whole thing um loaded up the truck around i think it was like 9 30 the night and we had to leave at like three four o'clock in the morning um then um yeah the truck was winched on the trailer because it didn't turn on mm. uh, <laughs> it, it didn't turn on the fuel system was not completed uh the tuning was not done we had an electrical short the uh, wrap was not on it suspension wasn't dialed in it was a great great <laughs> Great start. <laughs> right, so start how does, the... What's the level of anxiety? Like for the the idea that I'm putting a race car onto a trailer that doesn't it. run, that <laughs> doesn't have, and I still have to drive across the country. Four Brady days has his to hands get over yeah, his head, like, as, as high as you, you can. can see. Yeah, Brady's like, it's 11. It's down to 11. But like how at that point were you like, um, Fuck it, we shouldn't be doing this. This is just call it now. Like, like how did? I you mean, get... we did say that. We that was an honest thing. It was like, yeah, we did, it's just fucking dumb. What are we doing? How, then, how but did then you we, convince we, yourself to do it? Uh, because we don't give up. That's awesome. <laughs> That's just. I mean, we 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 set the the bar, I guess, in the Nissan community. Going, hey, Nissan's never really racing the hammers. One way or another, we're gonna get there, regardless if we have to push that damn truck on the starting line. Yeah, it's a no quit attitude for sure. Yeah, it was like a, it, it was difficult, um, but we didn't give up. The team was like, "All right, we got to work on it on the road. We're going to work on the road," and that's exactly what ended up happening. Um, one of the days, we actually couldn't go anywhere because of the ice storm in Texas, so we just sat there and in an entire day just Do you, worked so on the truck. Why is that like a normal thing now? Like it seems like, <laughs> well, you know, the ice storm in Texas, like everybody nods their heads, like, yeah, that's it. Oh, seems yeah. to be normal now. What the fuck is that? <laughs> okay. That is Apparently. not. Yeah, right. Did, it's like numerous years in a row there are ice storms. Do you remember Cannonball Run? They, I don't remember ice storms in Texas. No, cannonball, no, cannonball run. run. They're oh. they're trying to get the ambulance. They're doing the cannonball run. They got yes. the ambulance. They pull the ambulance into a tractor trailer and they're wrenching on the ambulance inside the trailer while they're still driving. And I, that's what I'm picturing these guys doing, like pulling a tarp, <laughs> pulling a tarp over the race car. And they're like, all right, who's going to be in the trailer for the next six hours? Like, <laughs> most importantly, it sure felt like that. It, 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 I mean, well, hold on. We, I think we spent more time fixing the trailers than we did actually <laughs> yeah. renting them. Yeah, trailers uh, plural, right? Trailers, because, I mean, yeah, so we had, <laughs> I think I, I counted a total of nine tires we changed out round trip, 12 tires we ended up buying for the trailers. Jeez. Wow. Because we had to buy two whole sets and a bunch of spares. So it was, yeah, it, it was a very expensive round trip. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to ask a bad question. Uh, oh no. Was that trailer not ever used before you put the race <laughs> no. car on it? Like, uh, so what, how did you it, get there? The, Actually, it's the opposite. Go ahead, yeah, the Brady. guy had just used it like two weeks prior and driven oh, from New really? York back to Orlando with it. He got, he got all his use out of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah, I mean, it, it's he said uh, I was actually talking to him uh, a couple weeks back, and he was like, "Yeah, that trailer's got like sixty, seventy thousand miles on it. Like, 
it is extensively used. But that's so that's like it goes one or one or two ways, if right? Like that's not either gonna break, oh okay, it seems like really solid, or holy shit, it has seventy thousand miles on it. <laughs> right. Like it's yep. one of, you can you can go either direction with that. My right. concern is: Were there any Toyota components to that trailer? Because it wouldn't, it wouldn't have broken I, if, if just, there were. I, know. <laughs> I think if there were to, Toyota components, it would have been like, "I ain't dragging this uh, Nissan all the way across the country. <laughs> I I refuse." Uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I what we felt like. So oh, wow! So you guys get you get how long did it take you to get from Florida just to Texas? One day. Okay. Uh, 20 how many 20 21 oh, hours he's on mute uh 20 so and then you spent another day in texas just working on the tr- on the rig yeah it was like yeah, yeah it was like yeah it, it was 20 21 22 hours yeah we did 21 hours to get to austin and we got there at like 3 a.m in the morning and then we got up at like 6 30 7 o'clock and started wrenching on the truck because the roads were just covered nice all of Austin was shut down. Wow. So, and then you spent the entire day there in Texas. And then what was the next leg of the trip? We left at 8 p.m. that same day. Yeah. Wow. And drove to almost, uh, well, halfway to El Paso, roughly. Yeah, yeah. And it's stop something at like people 1 think about. Again. There's a full day of travel to oh, no. get through it, Texas. It's three days of travel, <laughs> like normal travel. You know, if you're gonna like try and rest and be safe and shit, it's three days to go through Texas. If you're like a manic, it's like three eight uh, if hour days. Right? Yeah, if, yeah, if you're a maniac. Well, I don't feel too bad because considering the ice and all the trouble we had, we got through Texas in two and a half days total. It's, uh, that's dude kudos easy. yeah that is yeah that, that is uh, well, you were motivated it, for sure it, and here's another thing which a lot of people don't know at two at what 2 40 2 30 in the morning right before we got to texas my truck went completely sideways and we like, almost had to change drivers for king of the hammers because he almost died <laughs> Yeah, wow, I hit a patch of ice in the diesel and decided to uh, just whip around, and it was carrying the race truck. Oh, so no. it sounds it like that, yeah. that's the badge of qualification. Like I drove through an ice covered uh, Texas, and now I am certainly qualified for hammers. Like I didn't do that, I didn't do anything. The yeah, it was it was it was a little sketchy. I'll tell you that. And getting so to that point. How how many people were taking turns driving the truck with the trailer and the and the and the rig? Four, four. Did, yeah, did, it was, was it... four of us, two and two. Okay, so yeah, was two, it was two it tow like, rigs? Was it uh, Jesus? Was it was it like scheduled or you just went as long as you could and then the next? Who got took... the most sleep last night? You're yeah, driving right. now. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much how we we just just kept rotating. We we're like, hey, I'm gonna take. The next four or five hours, okay, great. Hey, I'm tired. Switch out, boom, and we just kept going. Like we just try to keep as much as we can. We could cover as much ground as, as possible. That's crazy. So what I want to know about is when you wheeled into Johnson Valley, like in Hammer Town. What were your impressions? Like, what were your initial? Well, I, maybe it varies, right? Like, because you came in early. Maybe it wasn't as crazy as like we all know it gets. Like, what were your impressions when when you got into town, and how? What was that experience like through the the week, two weeks that you were there? So when we got to Hammertown, or actually when we got to California, the Airbnb was great for you know the first three days because uh, we didn't get near Hammertown for <laughs> two days. Where did you stay? Uh, we okay, stayed so- in a uh, Joshua Tree. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we were sitting in Joshua Tree. We felt like it would be a little calmer, a little more relaxed to work on the truck there. And then we got the city ordinance to uh, kick us out of there because they were saying that we were operating a shop at the yeah. Airbnb. <laughs> well, we so, were. But... Yeah. We were well being grinding. Yeah, it's not a truck. shop, it's a race team. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, luckily, the Airbnb uh, host was really cool and was like hey man like i understand you guys are race team in any way we can get out of there and i was like yeah out of respect we left um so we went to hammer town dropped the truck off 
came back that night just to get some rest. And then we were there like first thing in the morning. Um, and I'll tell you what, it was wild. Like just walking in there, the presence of just like knowing we're going to race there was, I mean, I got nervous. I got the goosebumps. I, I got all over. I mean, that was, that was ecstatic. What day did you guys roll in? What day of the week? Uh, I think it was a I Sunday. I think it was Saturday. Saturday, Sunday, something like that. <laughs> I think so, it was Saturday. So that okay. was the Saturday, a full week before the actual race. Yeah. Right. So you guys, you guys get there on Saturday. At that point, did the car run? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here's the thing. You guys know Uprev, right? Uprev tuning. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Uprev, uh, I cannot talk more good things about that, th that whole team there. Uh, especially the owner, like he came in the middle of the ice storm, helped us get our ECUs tuned so we can fire the truck up. And then when he was there realizing, Hey, you have more serious electrical issues. I mean, to go above and beyond with your customer quality or, or you, your customer, you know, what do you call it? Customer service? Experience. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, service. yeah. It was like to go out there in the middle of the ice storm to help us out. That just talks levels of like, that's the kind of quality and customer service you want from any team, like any product. Um, so they helped us out identifying like the narrowing down the issue where we were originating the, the electrical problem. And then when we got to Johnson Valley, we worked on the electrical issue for since Saturday. Well, actually, no. From the moment we got there to Wednesday, Tuesday, Tuesday night. Tuesday night is when we fired. Tuesday night, yeah. No, we fired it up Wednesday morning. It was Wednesday morning, 10 Wednesday about morning? 10 a.m. Yeah. Okay. So Wednesday morning, we fired it up. Um, so we, the truck didn't run while in the meantime, we were just getting everything ready for tech. Um, tech last day technically was on Monday. Um, but they were kind enough and they worked with us cause we were like keeping communications with them and they were like, Hey, we'll let you tech on Wednesday, but Hey, by the way, you only have one chance to pass tech. Ooh. Yeah. You're like, can you look at it right now? Just quickly and tell me what's wrong. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what we like wanted. So we had teams with like running back and forth, asking questions, like making sure that we get everything that they're looking for or maybe something we, have, we may have missed. Um, like, Hey, this is the way we sent a picture or like showed them pictures. And they would be like, yeah, that's okay. No, I would, I would change this. So we were like molding the truck to their, to the rules. As we went along, even though most of it was already set up, um, a lot of things changed last second because either it wasn't working or we needed to change, you know, because time constraints. Um, so because of all that, a lot of our original plan went out the window and then we just said, all right, whatever they say goes. Um, so we passed tech on the first try. Wow, uh, one of amazing. two teams, all hammer week to pass on the first try. That's so out of wow. hundreds of competitors, we were the second team to ever pass on the first try. That's great. Yeah, so we were pretty proud of that one because after all the stress we went through, like not firing up the truck and the truck, I mean, I don't know, did you guys see the video where we were like jumping for joy when that truck fired up? Yeah. I, I mean, so. you're, <laughs> the amount of stress relief when it was when it fired up, it was like, we can actually race now. <laughs> um, it was it was it was incredible. So like you know, getting there and being able to pass tech was even better. So here I, here I am with Brady, fist bumping like yeah. I'm right. Well, I mean, you think about the work and all the time and effort and across the country and all the things that were working against you, and you guys you accomplished that. It, at that point, like just you guys could have just ran like a mile and a half and then broke down. Yeah, they were it playing on house money at that point. It. Like you could have still like enjoyed yourself uh, the rest of the time. I, at least I would have. But, you know, that's why I don't have a race car. But uh, that, that, <laughs> that is, I, uh, honestly, that's a big accomplishment. Yeah, we find it's a big accomplishment. Um, the best part is that we broke down as soon as we got out. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you said it go a mile and a half i think we went a half a mile and it broke down 
Matt, I'm, sorry, I'm trying from, to give you guys more credit. Then. From from the tech inspection? Yes. We passed the gate three out, out of tech. As soon as we get out of tech, gate three, I think like 200 feet later, the front differential decided to lock up. I mean, like C's stopped. Oh, I mean, it felt dude. like I hit a wow. rock. And enough, it was enough shock load that it broke our drive front drive shaft. Damn. And we didn't know it. Yeah, so we ended up having to rebuild an entire div the, the day before contingency. We See, got like, finished. This is where I'm out. Because I'd yeah, be I like, been like, you know what? I don't know, dude. It's under warranty. The, the I'll take it back to the dealership tomorrow. <laughs> like, like, uh, the universe is trying to tell me something. <laughs> <laughs> Something's <laughs> broke. Like, I just don't have. No, here's what it'd be. Casey, Casey, yeah, Casey. What is that? Get under there. It's what making a noise because I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we. I mean, we spent like. The, the worst thing is that it broke in the middle of traffic. So it spent, we spent like half an hour trying to figure out how to get the hub unlocked enough so we can roll it into the pit and then start working on it and then when we opened it up oh man that rear pinion bearing literally destroyed itself and so what happened was is because we're running such thick oil it wouldn't lubricate there uh oh, where wow. that area is actually it's 250 weight mm. it's not really like 90 weight or 75 90 or whatever gear oil i mean 250 weight is like molasses yeah um, so it was cold and it wasn't uh, circulating well, I, I'm assuming. Yeah. Yeah. So that's based on everything that I we saw. I heating up my lube anyways. Like, I, like you could have taken a <laughs> gas torch, warmed it up in the differential so it got to the backside because you got to get – like that flow. Astro glide. Yeah. You're talking about, no, I'm talking about differential fluid. Just <laughs> astro. Get in there. So, yeah, I mean, it, 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 it was an interesting thing. I mean, we – I finished the differential around two o'clock, one o'clock day of contingency. We had to be there by four. Um, and then packed everything in there, ran to contingency. Every single tech inspector that was there the night before that had passed us looked at us and goes, what are you doing here? And I was like, they told us to come here. He goes, just give me your stuff. Has anything changed? I'm like, dude, we broke down as soon as we got out. We didn't have time to even try to cheat. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so we ended up like they just, you know, helped us along get through there. Um, and yeah, we got out, and that's Thursday. We raced Friday. At, we're supposed to so be well, there. So take at me six... through contingency. You ran the contingency. Uh, I'll tell right? you, I would have blamed them for your breakdown. I've been like, you said I was so, totally cool, like everything. <laughs> you yeah. passed everything. Why did I break down? It's not like a, then... it's not like the city inspector. Lawsuits. It doesn't, it doesn't work. Lawsuits. Yeah, yeah it's the same California. You, I mean, you, you, usually you're supposed to be like <laughs> exactly. really thorough yeah. about this blame stuff Cal in general. Blame California. You on California. Everything. Everybody else does. Just blame California. Um, but <laughs> so contingency, you you had to run the contingency laps, correct? It literally just like a drive through Hammer. Oh, okay, okay. It, it, it's not like anything serious. It's just more like, hey, do you have your safety gear? Mm -hmm. Okay. Are your comms working? Yeah. Okay. Are your seatbelts still good? Yeah. Okay. Like it's just more safety stuff than it is anything. Else. Actually, our comms weren't working. We actually stopped at rugged radios during contingency. And had <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For real. That's literally what happened. Yeah, I need to um, sell radios. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. just drive by and grab them. <laughs> um. So, so that was Thursday. Right. So Thursday. Oh, it gets better. It gets. It just always gets better. Of course. Uh, <laughs> so far, the story is filled with better. <laughs> yeah. So um, we get uh, to, we keep working throughout most of the night. And it's like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock that night. We're supposed to get up and get ready, be at, like on the start or, you know, the, the line by 6.30 in the morning. And I think it was 11.30 at night. We're like, hey, you know what? We haven't dialed in the suspension. Let's go dial in the suspension. <laughs> <laughs> so for the so next like at night we suited up. Yep. Yeah. Eleven thirty at night, we suited up, got everything in, sat in the truck for the first time, really driving it. And um we realized our transmission temperature doesn't work, our oil our cooling temperature doesn't work, our tachometer doesn't work, our fuel doesn't work. So we had no gauges. The only thing we had was an oil pressure gauge. 
Um, none of that matters but, at this point. None of that matters because ascended. if your if your temperature ascended. if your yeah if your transmission temperature or your coolant or whatever gets up, you'll know It'll it's going to blow up. It'll You're still going to race. <laughs> Just race until it blows it up. It did. It did. So <laughs> we, we ended up. Um, we uh, we raced. Well, we didn't race. We were like running back and forth, like through uh, Hammer Heights or. Hammertown Heights, they, yeah. Hammer, our, yeah. So our, we're running. That's where back our friends are. Our friends from Wheeling Wine and Whiskey and Snail Trail and right. and all those guys hang out. Uh, Solve Function, Cruise to Camp. They mm-hmm. all hang out at Hammertown Heights. They're hoity yeah. hoity rich people. Yeah. <laughs> we, were, so we were. Yeah, we were all the way like towards the trick claw area, like and just racing up and down as hard as we can, like just tuning the suspension. I I felt like it was like two hours. And apparently it was only like 45 minutes. Mm. I was like, I, that's how exhausted we were. That we were like, all right, let's just drive it back to the pit. We parked it in there. We're like, all right, let's pack everything we need tomorrow and just leave it in the truck. And we just, you know, team comes in and goes, no problem. Me and Brady go to the camper, stayed at the camper. We both couldn't sleep. We start chatting till like, what, like 2.30 in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> and we're like... We're nervous. We're jittery. We're like, all right, let's get to bed. Yeah, we were so nervous. Oh, or can imagine. Trying to calm down and go to sleep. Yeah, so we we went to sleep. Woke up 5.30, I think it was. So we only got like three hours of sleep. And yeah, day of race. Like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> who, who does this? So probably the first the time racers. There. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So uh, we get there, and um, what's it called? Uh, we get up, we're, we're shooting up, getting ready. All right, cool. All right, hopefully our team's there. I send a group text. Crickets. I was like, oh, maybe it's just bad reception. All right, I get to the, we get to the pit, start getting ready. Still no team. I was like, all right, this is uh, it's 6.30, and we should be rolling out. And we didn't know where any of our stuff is at. And all right. So we just like started rearranging stuff. <laughs> 645 comes around. Nothing. Seven o'clock comes around. What? Nothing. 705, the team shows up. I'm like, holy shit. What is about to happen? So we're both now panicking because we're supposed to be there like a while back. And we're just jumping in there hey let's let's just get in there they're starting to strap us out the team's in there grabbing their fuel cans grabbing the tires grabbing everything grabbing the tools and you're all right we're leaving boom and they scattered the pit you know remote pit one and remote pit yeah uh, main pit and we're like uh guys like were they on like east coast time yeah. or something? <laughs> <laughs> i mean i i don't blame them like they were exhausted they put so much effort into getting that truck ready yeah, that, but all the effort like, putting it in, if you don't show up to race day, it doesn't matter. Like, like be exhausted later. Like, but but to put all that work into be like, you know what? I know it's race day, but I feel like we should hit this news button a couple times. You know what I mean, like, that's the point of that, guys. Come on, I guys. Like, I was like, uh, I was like, I think I felt stressed. Brady was getting pissed. <laughs> and everybody was like what the fuck is going on like we were just like all right whatever like just hunker down and let's just get out of here and we we we, yeah, we finally and... lined up it was like 10 till 8 we were supposed to be in line way ahead of where we were wow. and our comms weren't working we could hear each other but we couldn't communicate to the team or no navigation that's what it was. Navigation, navigation quit working, not working. So Tyler actually from Snail Trail came over and he's trying to mess with it a little bit with us. I couldn't get it. I ended up pushing it in as hard as I could and it finally worked. But that's that was a good at strategy. 10 to 8. Yeah. Yeah. That's I, a good solid I've done strategy. That. You could you I live my life with yeah. that model. I mean, that's <laughs> sometimes it just needs a little bit more shove to get <laughs> to get where it needs to go. So yeah, it was like 10 to 8, and they told us, yeah, you should have like left like 20 minutes ago what do you mean he's like started like you should have been taking off 20 minutes ago i'm like oh, oh shit. yeah they had already announced us as starting and we were way in the back of the line oh wow yeah. so we started like zigzagging through the 4600 class and got to the um right you know to the just 
you just rush this there and or like i don't care where you're at you're launching now or like okay so i don't know if anybody noticed but if you look at the video of episode seven when we're about to leave on top of the truck is a high lift block and a wrench <laughs> No, because <laughs> that is how much in a rush we were and it's like right on top of the truck and i didn't realize that until like the fourth or fifth time i saw it and i was like that's how i actually didn't even know that till just now when i have yeah. to go back and watch go, the video okay. Let, can, can we do a watch party yeah I was saying, you're, you're, talking about, you're talking about the, the road to the hammers right the, <laughs> no. that, that video series Epi yeah 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 uh yeah quest for the crown episode seven which is the story about uh, Camacho Motorsports, uh, MCI Race Work, um, I forgot, uh, Grizz, uh, I forgot what team he, he called it, but it was like Grizz and, uh, Russell. And so there was like the four of us who had like a story that was so drastically different, but it all kind of meshed together. Mm -hmm. Um, and we all had a lot of struggles. It wasn't just like, it was about family. It was about, you know, like Grizz's, you know, heart conditions and how he, he overcame all that. Us with all the bullshit that we went through, you know, it was a good story to put together. And right after we launched, you know, I was like, it was like watching that again, you kind of got like, you know, I was like emotional about it. Yeah. But then I, I, I just, something caught me in the top of that. I was like, what's on top of the truck? And I stopped the video and I rewatch it and I rewatch it. And I was like, son of a bitch. That's where the high lift block was at. Like, no wonder it wasn't in the truck. It's just, it's just, it was just on top of the truck. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it, it um, starting the race was definitely epic. Um, it was, I remember Brady says, he, he says, all right, we got a race. Make just just save the vehicle. I'm like, no problem. And my foot was just ready to like <laughs> smash. <laughs> like just like, oh, just let's get out of here. And um, I just remember I floored it. You can kind of hear it rev up, trying to go, and all of a sudden he just goes back off. I was like, okay, sir. <laughs> so I was like, all right. So I was just like, Ooh, just very lightly, but no, I wanted to jump that. <laughs> yeah, he wanted to launch it off that start line. I'm like, we haven't tested this suspension. How about we wait for a few more miles? Yeah, but yeah. we ended up launching it eventually. But um, the I'm I'm watching the the episode the launch right now where you're taking off, and I it's I can see I can see your number placard. Is it on the back side of that number placard? Right. Okay. So I can't. Uh, yeah, you have it on the. It's if you go to uh, King of the Hammers on YouTube, they have a whole series called Quest to the Crown, Episode One. You guys are first first face on screen. You guys are featured throughout the thing, um, but you can check out King of the Hammers um, on YouTube. Quest for the uh, Quest to the Crown, um, yeah. To see to see so, all this whole this whole series. So if you start at like, uh, where is it? Se seventeen. Yeah, you guys take off the line at seventeen minutes and seventeen minutes. Right. So right in front of the crowd, I want you to look at the top of the car at seventeen minutes. You can see the high lift uh, uh, base block on top. And you oh, can there it slide is. <laughs> the wrench right yeah, in front of it. A, you're coming down. around here. You're coming around. Uh, I'll put it on here. Hold on. It is so funny to like watch this and be like, holy shit. I can't believe that even so happened. Tell me that. Like... Uh, so at 17 minutes, let me get it queued up here. 1709 is when you can see it yeah. best. So they come around the corner, look at the top of the, <laughs> if you're watching the YouTube, you can see it. It's there's, there's the high lift block sitting up there. I, I will say though, dude, Hey, there's a wrench. There's the wrench. <laughs> the, the rig looks, it looks amazing. amazing. I mean, you guys did such a good job with that Xterra. Like it came out, the wrap came out sweet. Like the truck looks amazing. Like, are you happy with the way the truck was by the time it hit the start start line? as happy as i could have been um yeah we were kind of like there was a lot of things we did wrong because we were in a rush i i've I built a lot of vehicles but this is probably the tallest ones i've ever built 
Um, it looked insanely tall, mainly because the back was cut out so much. So it made it like this huge wheel gap. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the back is actually taller than the front by three inches uh, because I didn't realize like when you put it, when we finally weighed it down with everything, it just wanted to rock forward. And so we have, we, one of the things I'm going to be working on in the next couple of weeks is dropping the rear ass like three inches. Drop just to... yeah. Right. Okay. So, okay. Um, so other than that, I've been, I've been trying to work on that for I don't know how long. But good, good luck. Good luck, sir. So what? other than that, I've been, I, we were pretty pleased. Like I, I actually was surprised at how nice the front came out as far as like, People were like, oh, that's an ugly bull bar or push bar or whatever. I'm like, okay, when you're racing Hamburg, I didn't realize why people do that until we almost hit like two people. Yeah. And we're like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. it makes total sense. Like, I don't care how ugly this thing is. This literally almost saved my life. Yeah. Um, so when you are in the middle of the desert, especially on the lake bed, and you're chasing a truck going 50, 60 miles per hour, and you can't see, and he's literally like three feet in front of you. You can't even see his tail lights flashing at you. That's how much dust was being kicked out. Mm -hmm. So when you get that close, you are very thankful you have something that ugly in front of you because it's gonna it's gonna literally wreck the back of that car if you you know if you get too close. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as that, like I wasn't the truck was top heavy, but wasn't terribly top heavy. Um, it was super manageable uh top speed on that was like 62 65 that we were able to reach up with a broken transmission i want to make that very clear so yeah. that transmission blew up like a mile mark 15. so so let's talk about yeah i think we were in second or third gear doing 63 and when it was wound out so you guys yeah. got i mean you went through this massive ordeal to get the thing started and to the starting line and then you right. take off so so first i want to know about the first five minutes tell me about how you guys felt the first five minutes after leaving the starting line uh i'm gonna tell you what thing i felt like brady's bitch because whatever he said i did <laughs> <laughs> that's right he usually does <laughs> But I'm um, respectful about it. Like, <laughs> um, I would say I was I, I was so excited. Like all that effort, all that stress, literally just vanished. Um, it was just like we're here, we're racing. It doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. Last place, first place, middle pack. I don't care what it is. I'm just glad we were able to even take part of this. Like top one percent of the world's off-road racers are able to race this or can be in this like how many people can say i race king of the hammers yeah you're talking about millions of people watch this and you're involved with it yeah so I at mean, that point it didn't really matter to me i've raced people that have raced <laughs> <laughs> so that's as close as i've gotten hey what did you think of the uh, terrain because i know prior uh, oh, the right. last couple times we talked before before the race, you hadn't experienced anything like our terrain out here. What was what was your 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 takeaway from that? Uh, turn one nearly rolled us over. <laughs> um, turn two was great. Uh, after that, it smoothed out really really nice. Um, hill. The you forgot hill, about the sand hill. This first. No, I was just about to get there. Uh, first Easy. sand hill. Um, was actually the first time I thought we were having transmission issues, but I think it was just, I just didn't have enough momentum because the transmission wasn't shifting properly. Um, so I lost momentum going up. It took me three tries, got it up there. Um, uh, I, it was a Nissan, right? You're in that Nissan. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying like, anytime we go out to the desert, it takes these guys three tries, you know, oh, the four, the four oh. first, first shot. S stop. Oh man, come on now. I like to see your true. ranger go up that hill. <clears throat> I'm just yeah. Doing shit. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so we got there, uh, three three tries, got it up, went down, then started hitting that you know the desert section or the beginning of the desert section. Mm -hmm. um, I would say it was a lot nicer than I thought. Um, 
It wasn't. Not many I people say that about California. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm assuming you're talking about the school system and like. The- <laughs> <laughs> I pre-ran a little bit Wednesday, so that was my first experience, and it was pretty awesome. Um, I had to go around the sand hill because the pre-runner was way less power, but um, it, it was it was pretty amazing all the terrain. I did all of lap one in the chase truck. What what kind of vehicle um, was the pre-runner? Uh, it was a 2001 Nissan Frontier. Hey, hey. So I was saying, it's actually Nestor's uh, personal off-road truck. So. I was saying, please don't yeah. say forward. Please don't say forward. <laughs> <laughs> but he still couldn't make it up the, the sand dude hill. No, in the, in the pre-run, oh, no. he did. No, he said he didn't. He had to go around. No, I went around. He had to I go went around, around the sand hill because, because he his frontier he only to... validating the statement I made he, earlier. He didn't want to ruin the <laughs> hill. <laughs> It's a crawler, isn't it? He was saving the yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's it's five five thirteen gears, thirty sevens with making one hundred and seventy horsepower. Yeah, like (laughs) when it ain't really one hundred and seventy horsepower. You forgot the engine's got two hundred thousand miles on it. (laughs) Yeah, it's got two hundred sixteen thousand miles on it. Again, welcome to Toyota Life. Tacoma for life. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, so he Brady did the whole thing um, in in the pre-runner which hold on we can go back a little bit because brady was out pre-running when we were trying to go to tech and i was like dude i need you need to be here like we need to tech your stuff like without you we ain't passing and he's like i'm 45 minutes out i'm like holy <laughs> shit what is about oh just, just man. put somebody else put yes. somebody else in his outfit <laughs> It'd be like, yeah, that's Brady. That's sounds, the guy. Sounds like no. you guys need a project oh, manager. Yeah, you definitely yeah. need a Wrangler. Yeah. You need someone. Yeah. We working. did. Unfortunately, he his kid got seriously injured the week. Yeah, that was supposed to be my brother. Oh yeah. no. And so he couldn't make it out there. So we were like, all right, look, seat of our saying, pants, I guess. I'm um, willing to offer my project manager services. He's got Bluebeam. And I'll, and, exactly. Thank you. Thank you, Jose. Well, you guys told have, me you were going to be there. Stuff, and I work for, like, beer. So the, the worst case <laughs> scenario is, hey, Matt, where are you? Uh, where are we supposed to be? Like, And I'm hung over, like, crashed out in your trailer or whatever. But <laughs> I'll be in the trailer. I'm not going to be like 45 <laughs> minutes away. Yeah, you'll a, be close to useless, on being a, useless, not 45 yeah, minutes. I was, exactly. being useless. I was hoping to see you guys there to help us wrangle the team. You uh, know, but, I, I messaged you guys, I, like, six or seven times. Yeah, Casey, Casey Dude, kept saying I, I barely I was had trying, any service yeah, out there. Yeah, I know. There. That's what we figured. <laughs> Casey said that he had sent you several messages, and we got out there on Thursday – and you know, anytime on the lake bed, it, it, it's it's hit and miss. You don't know if you're going to have signal or not. Um, right. And he was sending those messages like at one a.m. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, yeah. What's up, we man, were bro? Away. Guess what I just we saw? Were away. You gotta you gotta think about like all those cell towers or like yeah, they're most like of it's like streaming. Out, dude, yeah. yeah, streaming like Taylor Swift music and stuff like that. that those are things that are like <laughs> you know people are. Apparently, uh, Starlink was like the was that the way to go? Yeah, it was like the way. To dude, go. that was that was. Yeah, we had Starlink. Killer. It was great. Oh well. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, but... I wouldn't have had that excuse. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so then, so you get you get. You do the pre-running, you get to the starting line, you take off, your your starting is amazing. Walk me through the race for you guys and how it how it like what your experiences were and, and how it ended. Okay. So here we after go. After the hill, that's when we had the first big problem. <laughs> um, right after the hill, I think a mile marker five or so, five or six. It was like in the first Six, right? Okay. Seven, six, somewhere. Yeah, according there. to the GPS, it was six. So there was like a little flat lake bed. Um, it was a small one. We looked at each other and went, what the hell is this? And all the car just violently vibration throughout the whole car. We're like, it literally sounds like the car is about to fall apart. Like, what is happening? So we pull over. We get under there and we're like, Checking drive shaft because I felt a drive by vibration. We're like, no, that one's good. That one's good. So Brady goes and double checks me. I'm going to the front and I grab that front drive shaft and that front drive shaft just goes clink, 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 clink. I was like, oh shit. Like, we have a broken front drive shaft. So we just looked at it. So our drive shafts were made by um, uh, dynamic drive lines, which 
I was about to say their craftsmanship is stupid. Like it's so good. Mm. It is so very detailed with stuff. Um, so we we went with them. Um, family owned, and that's kind of what we liked about them. They were like family owned, so they they usually take a lot more pride in their work, and you know, very they're just very detail oriented. Um, but so when that I'm, front dip locked up, yeah, yeah, six thousand pounds kind of breaks a CD. <laughs> yeah. So the drive line, we're like, all right, well, let's get it out of four wheel drive. Let's get it into and just, you know, run it the way it is. And so we just kept running it, just kept going past a couple people. Um, and right after we got into the military base and mile marker 16 or 15, somewhere around there, we started feeling the RPM just skyrocket, just like just pegged out red line. We're like, oh no, this is not good. So I shifted down, I grabs gear. Okay, we're good. And then when I try to start going up a hill, pegged out. I was like, transmission's not liking this. So we get around the bend, start coming down a little bit. I was like, all right, we're going downhill. Maybe I'll grab it. I floored again. Wham! Just wouldn't grab the gear. We're like, all right, we got to pull over and we pulled over and uh, we get under the truck and I literally tell Brady, uh, I'm almost certain that transmission's toast. And Brady goes, well, let's find out and let's check if there's, you know, fluids or leaks anywhere. So as soon as we get to the bottom, we look at it. I mean, that transmission was like dumping transmission. No. Fluid. It was dumping. So we're like, we cracked it. It was so. It was that the whole skip plate was just full of transmission fluid. So immediately we started putting like tarps under there and everything and yeah. trying to get it ready and try to get it ready to drop and capture all that fluid. And we get it down and the transmission itself was pretty dry. It was coming out of the two weep holes that mesh our atlas to the transmission. So we're like, it's got to be the rare main, rare seal. It probably blew out. Um, so we we kept messing with it. We're like, oh man, oh we have we have silicone in the in the car. We'll probably just clean <laughs> I stuff. was just gonna say RTV. <laughs> RTV. <laughs> no problem. Black right. seal. We were like, all right, let's let's have um, you know, we have fluids, we have everything, no problem. We get in there. I open the toolbox. Nothing. What? Do you remember how we said the race team was late? Yeah, they forgot to pack the stuff because they were late. Oh. Yeah, so we had no fluids, no RTV, which we'll get a little later on that one. Uh, no way of fixing it. Bubble gum? Like, we, did you chew a bunch of Wrigley's and then just stick it together? We, we had a first aid kit. So we had a first aid kit, and we're like, stop bleeding. <laughs> let's start figuring out what's going on and i looked in my back and i'm like well i got duct tape like somehow i forgot to take this out of my backpack so this will work so we pulled it out we're like all right what else can we macgyver out of this after being an hour and a half just stuck there and i started going through the medical pack and i just pulling everything out and we're like hey uh Transmission this will work and i showed <laughs> this <laughs> this piece of paper and he goes oh that will work and it says gauze, but then on top of it says tampon. And I was like, tampon Dude, for the win. Sure like, win. Yes. <laughs> Do this and shoved it in there. Yes. <laughs> and, um, red. Yeah, exactly. And it started turning red. We're like, oh. There it is. What it's, yeah, that's there. what it's designed to do. It, hey, I feel good count. about this, guys. <laughs> um, so we go, all right, let's go find out uh, if we can get a quart of oil from these guys that just broken down, one in front of us, one behind us. So he went one way, I went the other. I got a quart of oil. This other guy got a quart of oil. We ran together. We're like, ah, oh, we got two quarts. And we started filling it up. And then the guy behind us goes, hey, I have a tire plug kit. Will that help? I'm like, give it here. And Fuck we just shoved age. two tire plugs in there and duct taped the whole bottom of the transmission together to just keep it there. And when, please work, <laughs> we filled it up. Uh, we didn't have a funnel. So we had to take a, 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 a Ziploc bag, cut the corner. We put a medical tape and like yeah. taped it to the thing and yeah. just dumped it in there. And then um, after we got there, we're like, all right, 
fired it up, put it in gear, and boom, it grabbed gear. We're like, all right, let's go. And we started taking off. Um, I, I think it's it, great thinking about like three or four vehicles like broke down in the yeah, same area. Yeah, yeah. And you guys are negotiating like, <laughs> well, I have this. If you need that, I'll trade you this. And you guys it have It literally went that way. So when, this, and you guys have tampons. Like, what did I say? That? <laughs> the guy's uh, not a good advantage, you know. It's like Devastator, the transformer that all comes together to make one transformer. That's what they are. <laughs> They're like the, the, the Devastator of Ultra 4 cars all coming together to make one car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the guy in front of us blew a coolant hose, so he had bumped some water from us already. The guy behind us ripped his whole right front suspension off, so he was done. We couldn't help him out. <laughs> but who would have if we could have? Yeah. So we I mean, whatever limited parts we had, we you know, we were gonna work with that. And then um, so yeah, so we we uh we keep going and I think around mile marker just outside the military base. My marker twenty something or no was... we we were we were headed into remote pit one which was at mile marker thirty five yeah but before so... that we jumped oh yeah 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 that was mile twenty six yep. that was twenty six okay so about ten miles yep. later we get out and we're uh, we meet up with our, our our teammate and yeah so let's just play by play here um mile marker is this the right map. I don't know. This is probably the 22. Uh, I'd say no. Yeah, I was trying So the to... map was drastically different. Okay, yeah. Uh, this was 22. I have it so here. I would say no. We're, we we just know. This is our this map is from our Arizona trip. <laughs> no. Uh, 2018. It was uh, you know, we just we thought it would look cool. It was the 2022 Hammers route and I just brought it up to see if like I could follow along with where he was at, but it's definitely So different so route. if you look at uh, like uh, Google online like uh uh 2023 uh king of the hammers utv you can use you can probably find the map from that um and we got to mile marker um 26 which is right around all right so this is the map right up here oh that's 25 thank you yeah so, accuracy because cody was so much so much some I shit like that's, that's 25 why. miles south of there like i think cody <laughs> was so, showing something from like oh samsonite that's why i specifically didn't mention it as i was, I was looking but at you were it. still like pointing at some desert stuff i mean <laughs> i'm sorry so, cody kudos to you for referencing desert terrain good it job. was a map good it job, was a Holmes. map it was, was and it was desert yes so here's a little map Here's mile marker 15. You go up, and actually, you don't keep going. You make a sharp turn. And then here's a little mountain embankment where we broke down. We kept going all the way up here. We turned the corner. Our team was somewhere around here. We're trying to make this corner. And all I know is that I was so happy to see them <laughs> that because they were relaying for us. Um, uh, what he was trying to say is he was too busy talking to them to listen to his code drive. <laughs> right. So Stephen from Rugged Rock was helping us out. Yeah. And um, he was relaying a lot of them. So a huge ha- shout out to him because he was a massive help when and it comes we, to the uh, We've interviewed him a couple years ago. We interviewed him a while ago. Yeah. So that guy is a monster when it comes to communication yep. and knowing where to be. So. We're going, I'm just excited to see you. I'm like, yeah, hey, guys, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, hey, we're coming you in. Guys. <laughs> and then Brady's talking somehow. I used like a gnat in the back here, and I'm just excited. I'm just like, yeah. And all of a sudden, he just starts overcoming our voices and goes, whoops, whoops, big whoops. And then the truck goes, boom, and just catches the air. Just like a oh, good no. solid couple feet off the ground. And we're just, that's where that picture, I don't know if you saw on the Instagram, just like, us that was the beginning of us launching and he caught that and then just there's another picture a couple pictures that i have that i haven't posted yet but i was like the suspension is completely drooped out like just flying in the air coming down and that's where we blew our first bump stop uh because we landed pretty nose you know heavy it was just straight coming down like that at one point um then we made it to mile marker 34 and our transmission decided to take a shit again. Ugh. Oh, one mile away from our pit, we can physically see the pit. Oh no. Yeah, and just 
we basically set stopped the truck for like maybe like a minute and then put it back in drive and then i was at like 4500 rpms in first gear all the way for the last mile until we got there and then as soon as we got there team's like all right let's get this pan out let's fuel it up let's clean it up blah blah, blah. let's try to rtv this as soon as they pull those two things those two tire plugs it, it, like two or three quarts of oil just dumped out again. So we had at this point lost maybe about six quarts of oil in the transmission. No. Yeah. And so we stayed there for like, what, like an hour and a half, another hour and a half, just trying to fix and patch and do what we can with that transmission. Um, we ate lunch, <laughs> had a chit chat. Seemed no. like a, a good place to eat lunch and <laughs> yep, just, and just like all right, let's just see how far we can get. You know, at this point, just the Brady, transmission. Brady set up his uh, one minute tent. You know, we <laughs> we're about to take a nap there. Yeah. Um, then we, we did like, talk about crashing for ten minutes just to get a power nap in. Sure, no doubt. We don't yeah. have three hours of sleep. But. Right. So we're you know we're just all right. Well, let's mosey around and talk and bullshit and while well, teams getting it all ready and then we jumped back in took off made it through the first like a uh, small rock you know narrow section they're a little tight turns really nicely it wasn't terrible um that was through hold on i'll grab the map thank you oh, those okay so this is <laughs> thank you this is the remote pit one so we this is mile marker 35 we went through here. This is a little, little mountain, small mountain range that was very narrow. Uh, we get through all that. Got to my marker. I think it was my marker fifty right up here when the transmission started slipping again. So we stop, shut it down, check the fluid. Needs two more quarts of oil. At this point, now we have six quarts of oil in the back of the truck. So. Filled it up, kept going, topped it off, it, you know, took off again. This time I only made it five miles and the transmission said, no, <laughs> we're done. Um, it got hot enough that it started melting my my shoe. Oh, um, my God, wow. Yeah. So, it, it, like, the transmission was cooked. And we just sat there, mile marker 55 Ooh. or 60. Which one was it, 60, 55? We were... Are you talking about when we were on the military base or before? Yeah, so military base, we were right here, 55. So this yeah. is the end of the military base. That's where we were. Well, just before we got onto the military base, Steve-O uh, messaged us and was like, hey, don't break down on the military base. Can you guys make it across? And we're like, it's only like six miles. We can make it. Uh, wh why no, did they tell you not no. to break down on the military base? Because you're a target. Because they can't come get us. Uh, because yeah. border rounds, you're just part of, part of the range at that point. Like, you become, you, you become of, part of the training yeah, course. Yeah. Exactly. You just uh, yep. you gave up the vehicle. And yeah. it's, it's part of the Thank training. you for your donation to the U.S. military. <laughs> so, yeah, we got, we got to um, in the military base, and we were like, all right, what do we do? And we, we were at this 15 minutes in this discussed our life choices yeah we shut <laughs> the truck down we literally like instead of keeping the comms open and talking to people like we're just like nope just shut everything down shut Pull it down over. take your nap you finally get your nap look i'm gonna yeah. tell you every time i've camped out and i've never raced anything at johnson valley <laughs> but i always question my life choices at that point you know whenever i go out there regardless of whether i'm riding a dirt bike or camping or four-wheeling or whatever so that, I think that's that's what that place is meant to yeah, be. Yeah, it's part of the journey. Yeah, I mean, honestly, Brady was probably equally as frustrated as I was, just because the motor was phenomenal. That that motor was just a bat out of hell. The tri everything was working. Even the suspension, the little bit that we dialed it in, was pretty damn good for the little bit of work that we did to it. And the kicker that was killing us was the freaking transmission and we got up to about 15 minutes there we're just sitting there just like so we just we sat down we had a 
discussion, a one-on-one, -on -one, a personal one-on-one. -on -one. Mm. And we're like, all Except right. For a couple text messages that I read. Yeah. So um, at this point, we were already out of the race because uh, we couldn't do lap two because you had to be at 145 was the last cutoff time for you to do lap two. It was 230. So mm -hmm. that's when we found out about that 130, 145 time because we weren't looking at our phones. We were just racing. Yeah. Um, so we said, all right, do we make it at the end of the military base and just call it? Or do we just they fucking just do lap one and i told him i was like i am dead set i'm doing lap one like let's finish it yep. yeah let's finish lap one like whatever it takes and i don't know what got a demon possessed that truck afterwards what who pissed off what but that truck not didn't give us a single problem yeah. <laughs> afterward it ran perfect if anything wow. it worked better than ever before it was a pissed off banshee wanted to eat anything alive in front of it and i was like where the hell were you like four hours ago yeah and i mean we were flying this truck now wanted to do the fast the harder i pushed the, the accelerator the faster it wanted to go the better it soaked up everything i mean it was just like Bring all it. right mm -hmm. cool i'm a little pissed that this didn't happen a little earlier mm -hmm. but Let's see what happens. And we started getting into Turkey Claw, or right before Turkey Claw, and there was a huge, huge hill. I don't know what the hell that hill is, but it, it looked like a murder scene of cars. Just <laughs> over. Like, I was just like, there's, a, I counted, I think it was like four or five rolled cars right next to it. And we're like, perfect. This is where cars come to die in the, in the first lap. So... <laughs> or were they we get up to help you get up that hill? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, we just stepping stones or something. Uh, I know that there was a 4,800 car that just passed us, and I was sticking as close as I could to him. And Brady told me several times to back off because I wanted to chase him down. Because the truck was working enough to chase, to try to chase him down. Not that we were going to pass him or anything, but I wanted to stick close to him to be like, all right, can this truck handle that kind of speed? Or that kind of agility through well, this stuff. Well, I would assume, plus you get to see his lines or whatever he takes through whatever obstacles. You he didn't need right? to take his lines. No, nope. that truck just floated over everything. Oh, wow. Yeah, he wow. was in lap two. Okay. Yeah, he was in lap two. Just, he didn't, he just pointed and shoot and we're like, all wow. right, we got to take our time a little bit with this one. <laughs> um, okay. We went up that, that yeah. first hill that's when the transmission started giving us problem again, but it was only in that first, in that hill. After that, it stopped doing it. So up the hill, I couldn't keep going up because the transmission started slipping. I had to do it like two or three times and I just very slowly crept up there. Um, at one point we almost tipped back because we almost started falling in the hole uh, and um, we were able to recover from that. As soon as we came down, uh, down, that hill um we almost took the wrong line because i couldn't i don't remember what brady said if it was right or left i think he said left and i decided yeah, to go I right left, and he went right yeah so he goes your other left and by that time that was like pointing straight down so i had to like back up real quick and turn um turn we got in the beginning of turkey claw somewhere in turkey claw i still don't know because i have yet to see a surface video of us rolling over um and yeah you fought it all the way on its side on the rock in the middle yeah there's like the tires on the right hand side and the passenger side was probably a solid two no no four, three or four feet up in the air yeah with the suspension droop i mean it was he actually he forgot to mention wow. that his comms came disconnected at that left turn at the you didn't, top of the hill so he couldn't enough, hear me man. at all yeah, I didn't push it in hard enough because as soon as up that, yeah, that's true. As soon as I got up that that uh, hill, my comms completely got taken off and wrapped around the outside of the truck. No. So I didn't even know where it was at. It was just gone. It was just not there. So I was like, oh, uh, okay, I guess it's just me in the truck. I can't hear shit that Brady said. <laughs> but it was great because he pulled, he pulled every line that I was telling him to pull. 
It was, so I didn't know he, he couldn't hear me. He's, he's like, yeah, man, we've been super in sync the last half hour. <laughs> and he's like, wow, Brady, Brady's, Brady's being super quiet. This is cool. This is all. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> so, Brady's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Job. and then Nestor's like, fucker, tell me what I'm, what I'm yeah, doing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I was like smacking him in the head. I was like, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Like, yeah, and you're he's doing like, great. What? <laughs> Yeah, he just kept pointing, and I was, was like, affirmed, okay. Like, yes. Yeah, I started pointing at that point. But uh, when he tipped it over, uh, I was trying to tell him to hug the rock closer. Well, he couldn't hear me, and I didn't know that. And he pulled a little bit too wide, and that's why we tipped over right onto the rock. Right. So we, we, but we then tipped he was covered it. The crowd went nuts. We could hear him over the engine. It was crazy. Yeah, because, I mean, I mean, it would, we're talking about, uh, like, straight sideways like about that much i mean it was completely tipped over and well i thought i was like oh great i flopped this fucking truck like but then yeah. when it when it when i noticed that it stopped moving and i was on the rock i just kind of like floored it turned into it and like kicked it around i was like all right that was that worked <laughs> there's actually a dent above his head in the driver door or yeah like it's like the dent is like right here right above my head like that's how high it went up and that truck was already tall as it is so for it to be flopping yeah, that much yeah, to yeah. the top of my head yeah it was pretty far um and we went through turkey claw pretty quick mainly because i couldn't hear brady and i got more excited when i saw the crowd sorry and sorry i just brady. said i'm like i don't give a shit <laughs> <laughs> i'm just gonna bro- yeah he was pretty break excited this- but i yeah, was too that's pretty much this no. podcast. Like, I hear Cody saying things, but I ignore it. Nobody, they don't give a shit. They just keep talking about stuff. They don't give a shit. And then yeah, we're successful. Was... I think. Yeah, it was it was pretty good. I had the last uh, couple of miles after Turkey Claw. Oh, no, take that back. As soon as we got out of Turkey Claw, because I still couldn't hear him, he kept... So we had established... I we no, no, hold on. Let me let me explain. <laughs> we had established that before we race, if we lose comms, we'll start using hand signals. Left, yep. right, stop, go. Got it. No problem. That one's probably the only one. That, you one, one. <laughs> that was it. So he goes. Like this for stop. He just he kept going like that. Pointing left. I just, yeah. you know, have you seen that TikTok? I, I imagine I'm in there. I, you're wrecking the car. Wrecking you're wrecking the car. The car. <laughs> Please yeah, stop. Listen to me. It. You're wrecking yeah. the car. That is one of my all time favorite <laughs> social media videos is the rally car guys <laughs> yelling at each other about you're going to wreck the car. That's literally what Brady was yelling at. Like he was yelling like that, exactly like that. Just stop. Just stop. And I'm just like, go left. All right. <laughs> so ended up we started going opposite like the opposing lane and because the bronco was coming right at me the 4600 bronco was coming right at me it was really cool i was like oh shit and that's when i slammed the brakes i'm going what is going on here so i i looked at brady and brady just yelled goes, that in the picture yeah. comes yeah he's like what are you doing i'm like I-, I can't hear you i said that and he goes well fix your comms <laughs> Push it so, in harder. So I like start reaching yep. over and I look over and I'm like, I can't look. So I had to disconnect and I looked over and the thing is just wrapped around the outside. I was like, oh shit. So I was like, spent a good like 45 seconds trying to unravel that thing, brought it back in. I don't know how it really got over outside, but it, I finally got it connected, had to buck myself back in. It was like, all right, we need to go like 150 feet to the right. And I was like, <laughs> oh God, we're off course. <laughs> So we got in there and I didn't realize how big of a ditch there was. And I just saw this 4,800 car. I'm waiting. The ditch is in front of me. He passes me. I'm like, all right. Because obviously he has it right away. I cut the course. So he goes in there. I go down. I floor it. And that whole front end just comes off the ground and just comes slamming down. And I was like, oh. That and then cool. the crowd went nuts, and he went nuts on the accelerator for the next yep. mile. And so then, after that, it was just whoops all the way back, and um, we started, we lost communication with our team, so we didn't know 
Do we pull the main pit? Do we just finish the lap? What's going on? So we ended up not crossing the arch based on confusion. Like I actually went around the arch on the yeah. right because I thought yeah. we were getting off. But I didn't know where our pit was at. And what's it called? Uh, so I like, that kind of sucks. I wish I would have just crossed the arch. Yeah. It would have been yeah, at least nice. The but, picture of that. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I still crossed it. But just on the side of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was the gist of the whole story, you know, just easy peasy. Yeah, easy peasy. <laughs> I love that. Uh, easy so, peasy, lemon squeezy. Couple couple things from that story. The you talked earlier about how the suspension was dialed in and the motor was doing great and everything. It was just this transmission. But that's the thing about racing, man. It could be just a spark plug wire. It could be just a radiator hose. It could be just a turn, a, 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 a relay. That's not ma- like there are so many components of a race vehicle that have to work at peak level and, and, and sustain and, and in conjunction it, it, and all together. All it takes is one thing. There's been, there's been stories. I, I, I can't remember who it was. We were talking to, we were talking to a racer and they were like, uh, that group. Yes, about the electric. You just got taken out the radiator fan, I think. Yeah, the, so Groot was helping us out there yeah, for for yeah. Our MPU. Yeah. And and one one electrical circuit goes down, and you can't find those electrical gremlins. Guess what? You're done. You know what I mean? Like, it is well, just like Kevin Jones. He was running down the desert course, and his car started running like shit. Yep. And then they found out it was just an O2 sensor. Yep. Yep. The it, there's so many components in those race vehicles that have to work all the time. The fact that you were able to go as far as you did the first time out, considering that when you left Florida, the thing didn't even turn on. That's an amazing <laughs> yep. accomplishment, you guys. Like the, You guys pulled off an amazing feat to get to that point. That's, that's, the, like, that, that's the first thing that comes to mind. And the second thing is that... It sounds like a blast. <laughs> yeah, it was. But the it second was. thing that comes to my I mind keep describing is describing it as the best, worst experience I've ever had. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so there was at least through the course of the story, from the time you left Florida to right to the to the end, there was at least fifteen points in which I would have been done. Like like there was like, like fifteen times where like. Looks like this isn't going to happen, guys. <laughs> like, you know, the like, universe was definitely trying to yes. tell you guys something. Look, guys, and... my Chevron card doesn't work here yes. in Texas. Uh, and I think I'm, not paying, <laughs> I'm not paying a 35-cent fee at Arco. Fuck it. We're going home. <laughs> like, just, like you, you guys persevered through so much just to get onto the lake bed and just to put dirt under the tires and just to run and then to rebuild, like, build shit and keep it held together so, with duct tape and tampons so that leads to <laughs> that leads to are you doing it again next year? yes that was going to be the next thing like what's <laughs> what's the lessons learned for next year yeah. so we are um i am working on possible so here's the thing we're a small team i mean that's just a known fact nissan's like a ma- not a big community uh so being a small team being all that stuff that was an insane amount of money just to get there and back, especially with the troubles that we went through. Did we learn a lot of things? Are we going to change things if we do it again? Yes. I'm working on a plan to see if I can afford this again. Um, I really want to do it. Uh, I need to talk with a couple people just to make sure that we're on board, if everything works well, especially, you know, our wives that took mm-hmm. probably just as big mm-hmm. of a burden. Not, well, not only the financial burden, but the amount yeah. of work on the truck from now until February, the being just, gone for two yeah, weeks, just holding the, everything down. The, the whole, whole thing. Time. I mean, that, oh, it was more than two weeks gone. It was endless no. days in the shop. I flew saying, down like, to Florida numerous weekends. It's a, it's, um, it it is a family commitment. Like we've, we've right. talked, we've talked to a, a handful of, of racers that are, it's like, especially the ones that aren't backed by large money. It is a family commitment of all right. Well, we're gonna we have to make these sacrifices to make this happen, and it, and kudos to your families and and the teams that are involved to make it happen. Right, and and, and that's 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 what I, I like stress a lot of like people are like. Can you do it again? You know, are you gonna do it again? And I'm like, I I really need to reevaluate the burden that this put through the whole thing. So I am planning on it. But I won't say I can't confirm that yet. Not yet, at least. Mm. I, I, you know, because well, I just that, 
I, I think I can speak for you is that that uh, decision becomes a little bit easier if there's some financial backing behind you, right? Yes, it, it, it is. Absolutely. It is a lot. That would make it a little bit easier. Yeah, so, it, it, uh, it definitely helps. We need uh, we need Nismo, Nismo to, <laughs> to get on board mm-hmm. here and uh, help these Bob, guys. Uh, Bob Dotson. Bob Dotson. Yeah, Bob Dotson. Uh, from Bob Dotson. Can we get some five star hotels nearby for the wives so they can uh, join us? Five star hotels. Okay. okay. Not, not, right, not, no five star hotels. Yeah, yeah, bro, that yeah. that I can help you with. Surprisingly, that I can help you with. In, five star. Send them up to Big Bear. Send, in, send them up to Big Bear in Texas. And in Phoenix, I can help you with. Oh. Yeah, but they want it by the racetrack. <laughs> yeah, I don't, uh, on the on moon the, on the and way. in. Uh, no, if you're they around... got to drive back through Texas and Phoenix to get here again next year. <laughs> I don't think they're worried about the one night thing. I think I'm you just, know for a couple hundred bucks. I think they're talking about two weeks. Those in Johnson are the locations Valley. in which I can help. So, right? Okay. The whole the whole trip for us, I know for me and two of the other guys was like three and a half weeks just round yeah two. it's a big time commitment. it was yeah so it, Nestor shut down his whole business for three and a half weeks i shut down my business for two and a half weeks that was that was a lot and then the two of the guys that stayed and helped drive back because i flew out of phoenix those guys lost a whole extra what four days three days of work um uh, so it took a toll on them i'm sure they didn't uh have a but Great at the, but the, at the same time, back. like you're in Hammertown and it's like, it seems like the, the center of the off-road world, right? Like everything that's happening, those are the sacrifices you make just to be a part of that situation. And I, I don't, I, I've never made anywhere close to the sacrifices you guys have made, but I've been there and I can see the, uh, the drive or the, the desire, uh, the desire, like oh god, I come back here again, and I want right. to, I want to compete with my lessons learned and do right. it better next time. Like, so is, have you caught that bug? Is that is that something that you feel? Uh, is, is that a burning thing uh, with you guys right now? I know it's still mm-hmm. fresh, but I always, I, I've been telling myself, and I, I'm telling everybody. One way or another, a Nissan's going to finish that race. Yes. One way or another. <laughs> so Pulled behind if it means board. next year, if it's the year after that, whatever, whatever it is, I know what we did. We planned, we built a truck in six months and raced it, which was absolutely stupid. But like, it was a hell of a damn story. Yes. Like, <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I, it just eventually is going to happen. It's just a matter of when. Um, it do, it doesn't have year. to be this next year, but that truck is still, it still exists. Right. right. It's still going to race. You didn't burn it in effigy like, all right, well, we gave it our best <laughs> shot and you just lit it, it on fire. Burned like, itself. It almost yeah, it burned almost... itself. But I mean, you well, yeah, still... it actually caught on fire <laughs> once or almost. <laughs> but you still have that starting point. You don't have to, like, there, again, knowing what you know now. Uh, a reasonable like reset maybe is like a, a year from now, like a year and a half before you do it again. But you guys still, I would think, would still want to tr- give it another shot. Oh yeah, absolutely. That, that, that that's going to happen. It's just I'm just trying to figure out if I can. Do yeah, that. I think okay. I think we both want to because we want to be able to finish the race mm-hmm. in race time. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so I actually recently bought a bunch of new equipment um, for the shop. And, we're, like, one of the things I'm working on is trying to make, like, a better, like, transmission mount or coolers or, or like, I have a 3D scanner so I can, like, scan the transmission, whether it's just switch a transmission to either a manual or, or for a lady or something, something that can withstand that kind of abuse. Yeah. Now, that doesn't exist, that adapter, but if I have to make it, that's fine. I have the equipment to do it And even now. even a backup transmission. I mean, if you had a, a, a backup transmission in the truck once we you got to the pit... pit huh? We can't swap the transmission case. We could have rebuilt the transmission in the pit, but we can't swap the case. Same with the engine block. We wouldn't have been allowed once the race has started. Oh, is that that's a uh, that's, yeah, a, that's a, a, a rule? You can't change out the yeah. whole the whole uh-huh. thing. 
Yeah. Correct. Well, I mean, they could have just on, they could have just pulled on, up with on. my truck and then went, "Okay, well, here we are. We, you know, that one didn't work. How so we they, got another one." How are they going to know? No one's going to have helicopters. <laughs> no one's going to know. They had video cameras <laughs> in the pit pointed at the pits and they had an official out there. I mean, he came over and, "Oh, you guys better get that tarp. You guys can't they were fueling but we couldn't get out of the car. We're trying to get out. They're like, nope, stay there. Like, wow. Oh. That's when you start hamming that guy, Goldslogger. Like, hey, guys. <laughs> thanks for coming over. <laughs> hey, you know what? Thank you for checking yeah. on our tarp. I appreciate that. Here's some Goldslogger. I, 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 and that's my ignorance, but I would have thought as long as it was a like-for-like like replacement, you would be able to swap things. Like, if your shock blows out and you have an extra shock in the pit, can you not replace the shock? We can do the shock. But we are not allowed to change the transmission or the engine. You can't no. do the drivetrain. It's anything that has to do with the drivetrain, basically. From the way you I can do a whole axle. You just can't yeah, do yeah we can do an axle. That's what I'm saying. As long as, like, to me, if during tech you said, "Here's the transmission that's in the truck. Here's the identical transmission here. Put a che- put a red check mark on that. It's the exact same one." I don't know why they wouldn't let you swap. You, you've never run any. No, races. I don't. I'm, I'm stupid. You, I'm totally you, dumb. You can't do it uh, once the race has started. If they yeah. blew the transmission while they were pre-running, they could have slapped one in before the Cody, race yep. started. Why don't you just stick to your spreadsheets? Correct. Stick to your or, spreadsheets or, and whatever <laughs> algorithms you can no, like. Look, you, you know, whatever. Here, like I have that. a solution. Just drive a Ford, and the transmission won't blow up. Oh, oh no! <laughs> yeah. those, those, it, those are the trucks you'll, they you'll were get climbing. A, you get a whole it. bunch of Christmas tree lights on the dash. When yes, right, your tra- you the transmission's good. The engine. You won't know what's happening though. <laughs> if, it, if it weren't for the broken down Fords on that hill, they never would have gotten over it. So, thank you, Ford. <laughs> uh, guys, I super inspiring story. Like everything from the the grassroots dudes in a garage trying to make this happen to fighting the fight to get all the way out to Johnson Valley and then the ongoing obstacles out in the desert and you guys getting to the point where you did, that is, uh, that's super inspiring and kudos to you guys for having the grit to really get as far as you possibly could before you had to give it up. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I thank you, but I can't say enough about our team more than anything other else. than they slept but, in on race day i mean what, what, other than they slept what, in what, 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 those guys i would have them anytime yeah to be absolutely outside. like those Walk guys back are the, the, the reason Just why ne- next time there. tell them they have to be there at 4 30. <laughs> that might no, work next time they're staying in the camper with us yeah <laughs> oh there you go yeah yeah um, yeah but other than that like i always like it, it, it is possible to do this race if you do it right and if you don't live all the way across the country, um, it would be a lot easier. Yeah, you guys <laughs> you guys have four days on the front, four days on the back, and an extra, I don't know, five grand to get there and back in fuel and and, and uh, hotel stays and all that stuff that, that a local Southern California team doesn't have to battle, right? For for a right. lot of for a local Southern California guy, it's it's two hours away and uh, you know, you don't have that that whole challenge. Right. And, and like, I, I lost count how much in fuel we spent. I know that we blew a bunch of tires back and then our diesel truck broke the DEF tank, like in Texas, right outside of Austin. So we were stuck there for an entire day trying to repair that whole truck. And then what else? Yeah, it was, it was, <laughs> it's, ex, it's so much extra money. It's like, we didn't even, it's things you don't plan for. Like, I was like, oh, I'm going to over budget for like $2,000. Hmm. Ooh, excuse me. And it was I mean, we, being like five, six grand extra. Yeah. Like, holy Cause shit. we bought, we ended up buying an entire wiring harness out of a junkyard and swapping an entire harness on top of everything. So it was just a, a ton of unforeseen expenses. Mm, wow. Uh, so, so if there are companies out there that hear this and want to support your guys run, whether it be, 24 or 25 or whatever how how would someone get a hold of you to try to at least inquire about helping you guys with the next the next race so the race team is camacho motorsports um all anything race appropriate any performance upgrade any of that stuff it's always going to go through camacho motorsports 
So we have a new website, CamachoMotorsports.com. Um, and then we also have our Instagram, uh, Camacho underscore Motorsports. Um, and then they can also reach out to me or Brady at Nestor at CamachoMotorsports.com or Brady at CamachoMotorsports.com. Um, that's the best way to reach us out. Um, just message us, email us, whatever it is. Um, assistance will be great because we really want to do this again. Um, it's just like you said, assistance with even if it's not money, if it's like, hey, I can help you source a new transmission or yeah. hey, I can source yeah. new all the tires, suspension, lights, seats, a wiring, place to, yeah. a place to stay, a place to, yeah, a place to, to, place to stay, everything. honestly, everything. like stuff Every, like that. That's the thing with, with you guys that are doing this. You, you, we're going to call you the everyman guy that's doing this out of pocket. Every little thing costs money, and every little thing that you can get help with Helps, makes yeah. it makes a difference, right? If someone's got an right. Airbnb in in Austin, be like, hey, dude, you can stay at the Airbnb for the weekend, uh, or or you know, and you whatever. can make as, as much noise as you, as much want. As you, you want. Nobody's going <laughs> to yeah, 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 yeah. All of that or welding stuff. or grinding, or, or hey, get to California and I got a shop. You can you can stay with us and work here for a couple of days until you're ready to raise. Like any of that stuff helps. So I, uh, you know. Anybody that wants to help a grassroots team of guys that are that are living the dream and working their butts off to get there, uh, reach out to Camacho-Motorsports.com, connect with them, and find a way to help. Um, and uh, I would love to talk to you guys again in a couple months. See what the status is as you know as the year progresses. What's your feeling? Are you ready to go? Is this going to happen? Because my fear is you're going to wait till November to go, <laughs> yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, somebody, gives, so, somebody gives so, an Aaron B and yeah, New Mexico. We got a $1,200 we, check. And let's go. <laughs> yeah. We've already been talking about fixing the transmission. So we're, we're, we're way, way before your schedule. So okay. We'll yeah, so, figure it out. so I'm actually, uh, this weekend, I'll be ripping out the bump stops. I'll be ripping out, um, a bunch of stuff i actually i gotta go to the junkyard and grab a new dash because the dashboard that we have is like horrendously laid out um and so i gotta hide the wiring that's literally just spaghetti all over the dashboard um so there are changes and accommodations like another thing we're gonna i'm gonna do is bring the seats up to get a little better visibility and comfort um better nets so we're working on it so there are minor changes uh, a couple major suspension, like I said, the rear suspension and probably drop the front suspension like an inch. Um, besides that, we're trying to just stay true to what it is right now and just fix the transmission because we had a solid truck when it worked. When So if that's the minor changes that we're going to do and I don't have to blow thousands and thousands and thousands of yeah, dollars so I'll pro so, i'm probably gonna do it you've done so much work to get it to this level now all of your your effort and resources can you're, be put to right about making, there yeah yeah just making just making get, it nope. solid like how do i get it through the entire race you know what i mean knowing knowing the terrain now and realizing right. the complications of stock up on tampons i mean all of, of the things <laughs> uh, fluid day. And, uh, you know, whatever plugs that you need, you know, 100%, Dude, uh, like you've, you've already invested. I think the initial investment is like the biggest, right? And so now you have the experience and you can take that knowledge that you've gained and, and go forward and say, Hey, um, let's just stay away from all the Fords in camp, yeah. you know, so make he, sure that they he, don't infect us. Here's what we need to do. Bad luck. We need to like. Right around that November, they rubbed frame. off a lot. Yeah. we were right next to them. <laughs> See, uh, right around November time frame, we need to have like a, a social media contest with uh, with these guys and have everybody mail them a twenty five dollar Chevron gift card. <laughs> like just like, <laughs> whatever, get, whatever, yeah. whatever, whatever we can. Yeah, yeah. like a te every everybody send them a ten dollar gift card from Chevron or something and try to get as much gas money as we can to get them across the uh, uh, across the country so they can race this race again next year. Yeah, that would, that would, I mean, I I think that, that would be a massive assistance to try to get out there. I can't, I, I'm i excited for next year because I really, really want to do it. But as soon as I can get this transmission off, 
I will it, it off and torn apart. I think I will be even more like hell if once I once I start that process, I'm you probably gotta, not gonna stop. You got to reinvest. You yeah. got to re yeah. uh, to hook back in and go. All right, I got this problem solved now. Yeah, and now I'm yeah. ready to go again. Funny exactly. thing is, I took the seal out because I got it to the shop and it was just still puking transmission fluid everywhere. That seal lost its tension, and that's all it was. No. The seal was perfectly in. It was still like it was touching the 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 the, the output spud shaft. Per like it had perfect uh, uh, contact. It was just lost its tension. Mm. That's you all lost the spring around it. I'm, I'm so the spring, spring around felt it? super soft. Like it didn't feel like it had a lot of good like you know good, good tension on, on on the seal so that i feel that I seal sounds you... like it's 49 years old <laughs> I, was, I was just gonna say cody i don't know if you noticed but i'm nodding like approvingly yeah, yeah, yeah. as if i know yep. exactly what he's saying well i'm, I'm like, just yes. saying right 48 <laughs> yes. right around 48 years old all of my seals lost their tension as far as it's just <laughs> at this point. you know what i'm i'm finding new seals that i didn't even know i had like oh I'm my god leaking out of parts i shouldn't be leaking <laughs> yeah. out of oh so uh, that's, that's what happens. Funny, we'll see what the doctor says tomorrow when I go for a checkup. <laughs> Stay away. They were like, what do you need? I was like, I don't know. I'm old. I haven't been to the doctor in like five years. They're like, oh, okay, we got you. <laughs> I just, I need a, I need a seal check. <laughs> yes. I don't, I don't think there's any more tension in my seal. Uh, well, dude, you guys, seriously, I, this is a great story. I love hearing about it. For everybody that hasn't gone and done so, go to Camacho Motorsports on Instagram, Camacho Dash Motorsports. Uh, dot com for their website go to the king of the hammers uh youtube page which is at king of the hammers underscore official and find the uh 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 Bridget program the 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 quest to the crown there's an eight episode series all about uh uh the 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 racing and these guys are, are featured in it and it's um it's pretty awesome uh guys Again, thanks you for, for your time and telling us our story. We really appreciate it. Is there anything else before we let you guys go for the night? I just want to make a huge shout out to all our sponsors. Biggie Thompson, Dynamic Driveline, Uprev Tuning, Deech Works, uh, Vision Wheel, those guys, uh, MCI Race Work, Rugged Rocks. Like the team that came together, uh, American Iron Off-Road actually – the owner of American Iron Off Road stayed with us and helped us out one night, trying to get us to, you know, to race um, and figure out some of the alignment issues we had. Like, I think the the help those sponsors have provided to us was astronomical, and I can't thank them enough. I'm very happy to represent them, especially with the amount of help that they gave us. We also can't forget to mention Far Motorsports. Uh, yeah. They're actually out of Austin. They put us up in Austin. Um, I think they lent us a couple parts while we were there and a bunch of time helping wrenching. So those guys are pretty awesome to help us out. Well, that's the yeah, thing, man. So... This is a community. It takes it takes a lot of people to get a, a, a truck onto the race course. Right. Absolutely. And like those, you know, we we partnered up with all these teams just to help us get there, but also the networking, the community, and the knowledge they offered was so valuable that, like, I ask them all the time, like, hey, I know this. Can you help me with that? And they're still willing to help us. So, like, great people, like, they know their stuff and, and everything. And I, I can't I can't be thankful enough with those guys. That's awesome, man. All right, guys. Always good to talk to you. Thank you so much for your time. And we will talk to you uh, sometime before the next race. Absolutely. All right, guys, we're going to end it there. We're still live. Um, we're going to end it there. And uh, um, the uh, again, seriously, I, I, I would love to – I think we could find a way to drum up some more uh, support for you guys throughout the course of the year if you decide you're going to do it next year or the year after, whatever that is. Um, let's uh let's you know stay in touch and see what we can do to help you know like i said if everybody just sent a ten dollar gift card for chevron i mean that how that'd be yeah you guys would get like 40 bucks get, yeah, awesome. get like five <laughs> hey um, 40 bucks would have helped 
Yeah, tremendous. <laughs> yeah. No. Maybe I'm... Jose can bring out his motorcycle and run parts for it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I don't know. Not, well, a, not if you want them back. Yeah, yeah not if you want those parts to not make if it. You yeah, them. Yeah, if you need yeah. those parts, don't count on me, dude. Maybe, maybe, maybe if you put them under your be, health insurance, it'll be yard sales all over uh, Boone Road. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, where's Jose? Follow the scattered yeah. parts on the ground. <laughs> but I think you guys provide like the best insight to like, uh, you know, oh, I can run hammers. Can you? Yeah. Like, do you realize how how, uh, how what a huge endeavor that is? Yeah, you need. You need twenty people and a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, that's, you know it, it, that's not a lot. It's going up, I know. Going no, up. No, I'm. I, I don't. I don't. I, that, I don't think that's an exaggeration. Like, yeah. By the no. by, the time you, the vehicle and all the material and all the parts and then all the the qualifications and all the safety stuff and all the the travel. I mean, it's it's not it's not a weekend and five grand. You know what I mean? Well, no. it's a it's no. a you you have to love it. You have to love to. Do, do it and and you have to be inspired to do it so uh that that's what's exciting about talking to you guys because you're doing it from the east coast yeah. i mean it's even it's even that's more complicated crazy. for you yeah yeah no, no we're just stupid and crazy and we're just like oh crazy let's go like, well, i love you guys if you want to love you guys <laughs> you guys uh, keep you, know, you keep you know, being stupid and crazy wish, we'll keep talking I wish, to you i wish you guys were on yeah. the west coast i'd be uh you know 100 percent involved with whatever I could do, you know, to help you guys out. No, um, I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's, it, it's definitely, it's definitely for anybody who's like trying to do that. Like you really have to think about how committed you are to this because yeah. it makes or breaks you like no question about it. Mm -hmm. it. You, you will find out a lot about yourself and everybody else around you very quickly. It almost broke us. I, yeah. sure. oh, I can, I can imagine. I can absolutely imagine that it's not, it's not something you take lightly. It's a it's a huge commitment on a level that m most of us won't understand. Right, it, it, and it's like if you if you want to do it, you have like I I always tell people like reach out to me. I don't care. I'll talk to you about it. Like reach out to Brady. All of us are open to talk about like what it takes to get to hammers or mm -hmm. something to that level of extent. Like it might not be hammers. It might be Baja. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. It's still something that. To that level you're talking about the formula one of off-roading mm -hmm. you're talking about the daytona 500 of off-roading like you're talking about the big the big race and that's no f easy feat to get there mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely well i mean it's pretty easy for me i mean i just yeah. get out of work and i just gotta <laughs> I just drive two I, hours i gotta hit sure. the i'm there i'm hour. there 45 minutes from my door yeah, yeah. you know uh but it, that's just for me to hang out at that location uh, <laughs> but yeah dude uh, i i completely um it's pretty inspiring like and and i hope you guys i hope you guys got that bug and are able to do it again not just because of nissan stuff i just um you know, I hope you guys enjoyed yourself and, and thought that it was worth all the work and the effort. Because I'm not saying that I understand how much entirely, but I have a pretty good idea how much time and effort <laughs> it took. And uh, kudos to you guys, man. Like, uh, mm -hmm. you, you did it. You did it. Right. Hey, we're not 30% anymore. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But yeah, no, I, I, it, it was fun. I, absolutely. Yeah, I'll be on the show anytime. You guys just hit me up and I'll tell you how the next 30% on my like... nice. I'm, <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready for it. Um, all right, man. Well, you guys have a good night. We're going to finish out the show with a little some more commentary and then we'll uh, I'll send you an email when everything's ready to go. Okay, sounds good, man. Thanks, guys. Have a great Thanks, day. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Thanks, Bye. guys. Bye. Uh, that was actually pretty long. That was actually an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, Talk about Mojave really quick. Okay, we'll do a quick. Uh, yeah, yeah. Jose, you bringing your bike? Three, 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 two, one. All right. Thanks to uh, the guys for joining us, and uh, we hope to talk to them again uh, soon. Uh, before we get to Casey's question, I wanted to kind of show something. Check this out. See, damn it. 
So in the background there, there's a sign that says adventure is out there. We got that sign for the studio from our dear friends, uh, Mark and Abby. It was a Christmas present. And I've been oh. trying to figure out how to g- – I had it set up, and I tried to put it to – but every time you turn it on, it's just so bright. Oh, there it is. It blows out. It, the, it blows yeah. out. You can't it's see it. Overexposed. And that's 10. That's at 10%. That's a hundred percent. That thing is bright as shit. It is awesome. It has flashing modes. It has all kinds of different modes. Wow. Um, Isn't but, that what that's called, Jose? Overexposed, right? You're yeah. The photographer guy. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so I just wanted to let Mark and Abby know that the uh, it's up in the studio. I've been trying to find a way to do it and still be able to see it on the camera, but every time I've tried at every different angle. It just, the 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 light is so bright that the camera just box at it. So I've had it off this whole time. And earlier today I tested it and it looked good, but that was without one of the studio lights on. So uh, thank you to Mark and Abby for that. Adventure is out there. Thanks. Don't forget, adventure is out there. Uh, and I'll try to figure out how to make that do something that's that can light up and do something else. Um, hey, but to answer your question, if I could like. If I knew how to ride a motorcycle, I would drive it out there. Yeah, Casey, Casey and, just uh, asked Jose if he was going to bring his motorcycle to Mojave if, in two weeks. If I knew how to ride, I, I a was going to say I, I, I would. <laughs> but, put it in the back. I can I can have Zan drive your truck. Well, I'll tell you. I, yeah, I don't think you're allowed to run as long ATVs. As, street legal. Huh? My, as long as it's street legal. legal. Oh, okay. It's street legal. Bro. Yeah, as long as it's street legal, you can you can do whatever. I'm saying Jose brings it. Played it and, and faded. We all take turns. <laughs> we, all, <laughs> we all we all take turns. Somehow, but, but if that it, is, with my previous uh, dirt bike experience, I, I, I anticipate everybody having to kick my – when it's my turn, everybody has to kick it over at least oh for half God. an hour. Have we told that story? Have I, you ever told that story? Yes, we have. I have, yes, a, I have, I have, have electric have. start. I yeah, electric. I know. Yeah. yeah, I know. It doesn't matter. We're all going to have to kick it over before it'll finally <laughs> run. No, but that that's like the ultimate goal is like to do a trip like that, like just – on the bike like drive it out do the the ride and then... we've been watching those videos of the r6 in the desert like oh dude those so guys are this, fucking crazy there's, there's videos all over social right now of did a you guy see when they did it in uh glamis yes, bro, yes. that's what we're talking about that, that uh, bike is like a dune monster bro. yes <laughs> that would be so epic but that thing overheated it's a, like really quick. Yeah, overheated oh, like crazy. Sure. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't it doesn't have the radiator capacity to handle that kind of dude. Load. But that R six with that paddle, it's like it'll destroy any dude. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why you need a Hayabusa out there, huh? <laughs> um, you should have bought an R six. That an R six <laughs> on Mojave would be hey. epic. I thought I saw you up here at Standard Brothers. I saw that KTS. <laughs> that, video, that was so yeah, funny. I was, I was I-05 reading the owner's manual. <laughs> it was like a 450 Duke or 600 Duke or something. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was, it was a Duke. Bike. Yeah, yeah, but I've been like all in on like adventure bike videos on YouTube. It's it's crazy what some of these, these guys ride through on a motorcycle. Holy shit. Um, Look, Jose, How are you going to fit that I, swag tent on your motorcycle, Jose? I, you can't, bro. I got to use, <laughs> use one of those like. Uh, backpacking hammocks or something i think jose and i start another podcast once i get my bike running and it's about like uh i don't think we would camp out of uh our dirt bikes but we could still like run trails and stuff like uh that's uh, uh bell bell mountain to slash x or something like you, yours isn't plated so you can't drive it on the freeway. no i would still have to like haul it out there and then i'd have to ride it that's back lame, across bro. the dirt lame. Lame. you need lame. to get a plate but uh, how about this I'll guarantee you this. If we got off at Bell Mountain, rode to Slash X, and I left my truck, you rode your bike around and did the 58 or whatever and came back around to the 15 or whatever, I would cut across and get back and have it loaded back on my truck before you went around. I would make that bet. I, you'd probably win, dude. I'd probably fall like eight times. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I wouldn't be there to help you. <laughs> like I would you'd win get that truck, but it would be a horrible yeah, scene. Uh, yeah, but I'm, I bought new armor, so I'm like ar- armored up now, like Robocop, dude. Yeah, we were talking about talking that. Like, how, how much ammo do you have in your leg? <laughs> All of it. Like to reload. <laughs> like if you had a like, you know how your your uh, pistol? It's not a pistol. It's like a. Uh, hand cannon. Oh that goes, yeah, dude. That no. goes back into your leg, comes back, comes back out reloaded. 
How many rounds do you carry in your All leg? of them. <laughs> you carry all of them. Right. Gonna, Here you go, man. Dead or alive, you're coming with dead me. Dead or alive. Yeah. You're coming with me. Uh, WR450, street legal. Yeah, no, I, I have a 450. Like, I somehow have to cheat like Jose did and get it registered out of state. I could probably Mine's, get plates on my bike. That's not a problem. I don't California think that's a problem. Plated. Mine's California. Plate. I don't think you can, because I, I looked into plating that bike, and after a certain year, you can't. What year is it? Oh wait, oh wait, yeah. Oh, wait. Uh, it has eh, to be whatever. Two thousand two and below. Hold yeah. on, hold on. The problem is here's the issue. Like, oh, he's gonna ride on the highway to get off road. No, I'll just take my truck. That's not and the I'll, point, dude. That's it is. Point. It is the point. Cause you, you you bought a dirt bike, Holmes. I'm sorry. It's a you think you sport. bought a? You thought you bought some? You thought you buy? Take that thing on the highway tomorrow. I you really, can. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> you can, right? <laughs> do it. Do it then. Dude, I, go I, just I, go down to the fucking uh, Eastvale. Drive it. Take it. Uh, I, right, I, I expected him to come Archibald. here. Exactly. I, 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 I was, take I it on ride. Archibald. I wasn't on Archibald. Get on the sixty and take the two miles to the fifteen and the two miles down. This is what you need to do right here. Take Matt. the highway and see if you feel safe on that thing, bro. I You'll was, be putting I that on, shit on your truck in no time. I was on Riverside Drive going like fifty. I'm like, uh. no, that, <laughs> yeah, that's not <laughs> the highway. that is not the highway. I have the you know inadvertently. Driven my, ridden my dirt bike on a high, uh, on the goddamn 247, trying mm-hmm. to get, get into Lucerne. Yep. And it's comical. Like, yeah. There's semis coming by you. And when they do, it's, it's mm-hmm. not good. Like, you're you just, you, you the whole time you're like, farts. I don't belong here. You, I don't belong you feel, here. I, I want to get back into the dirt where those whoops are, like right over there off the highway. I, I feel safer doing 20 miles an hour. 30 miles an hour on those whoops than you do trying to keep up with the yeah, semi. I've been going down way down the YouTube rabbit hole on just like all kinds of dirt bike riding, like hard enduro. Have you guys seen that? Those no. hard enduro races? No. Dude, it's fucking crazy what these guys do on their bike. Like they climb up like walls. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they do um, right at the uh, what used to be the Citizens Business Bank. I don't know what it is now. The the Ontario Arena here. Oh, the, it's Toyota. Toyota. The Toyota yeah. Arena. They do um, they do like arena enduro, and, and, arena, and, yeah. arena enduro and, yeah. races there. Huh. But those races are crazy, dude. Like mm-hmm. it's so crazy what these guys can do on a bike. Just the way they handle a bike, like uh, it's like they're riding a bicycle. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Well, yeah, no, that we're nowhere near on that level. Like we're just um, it's just crazy what you can do on a on a dirt bike, though, dude. It's just crazy, like. People can handle a dirt bike like that. People can. Yeah. You can. I, I will never. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, uh. And then there's like a, because there's like an official race series, like a hard enduro race. And there's like a reporter. He's like yelling into his uh, helmet cam as he's following the racers. What? I'm like, this guy has to be just as good as them just to. <laughs> just to keep yeah. up. Yeah, just to keep up. <laughs> but it's pretty crazy, guys. Like, uh, it's that whole dirt bike world is a whole crazy thing I, I had no idea about, dude. It's all kinds of nonsense, uh, well, man. Well, you're about to figure it out. So uh, you're never I can't. See me again. <laughs> I'm gonna no, ri- I'm gonna no, ride into the stop sunset. it! Don't don't say that. We, we, we haven't even rid together yet. So yeah, I'm I'm, just, I'm gonna learn. Just relax I'll be a able little to bit. Sh- I'll be able to shift by the time uh, <laughs> we get to. <laughs> I, hopefully at some like, point doesn't even um, know what what second gear sounds like yeah dude i get you into second or third gear you know where you're comfy and cozy <laughs> and we'll go hit some trails like uh geez man uh something simple i'm telling you clayhorn just stay on the main one yeah, yeah. You know, it's just that's a fire where, road dude. yeah that's, that's where he and i on, the man. first time we, he and i took my bike out well we were gonna clayhorn. do silverwood that's right we yeah. were and uh, I didn't have my bike registered, so they kicked us out. And we did some trail off at 395, which was fun. Yeah. But the – look. We'll do, uh, like, uh, Outlight Center Drive. Mm-hmm. Oh, get Barstow? Off. Barstow? Yeah. Th- 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 pick your truck, my truck, mm-hmm. haul the bikes up there, and then just cut across. We could take one truck. Do the – yeah, that's what I'm saying. And then we hit the uh, – um, uh, X, 
What's the what's the bar or the slash X slash X? We have some lunch over there. That's like an easy Sounds trail. Like an amazing week uh, day, bro, on the trail. Yeah, no, of course. <laughs> and there's like variants. Like, yeah, I'll go hit that hill if you want to go hit that hill. Go hit those little variant uh, offset trails if you want. Whatever you want to do. I definitely need to get the suspension sorted on my bike though, because the guy before me was way lighter than me. So. <laughs> I think like, you need to get you sorted, not the suspension. Uh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you need to worry about, like, uh, where the clutch is and your Dude, rear I, brake. I could fucking shift, all right? To second. All right. Yeah. Well, all right. Yeah. Look at you but all from, fucking. Don't go from fu- neutral to first. Yeah, you can you, go, yeah, I can go to neutral. Rear brake. Rear, rear brake first. Yeah. And then, like, uh, you know, then. I got that sorted, too. I adjusted okay. the brake so it's not just fucking on-off switch, like. You know, I don't know. Maybe you've been riding around with like one eye, just like I had been, Maybe. and you know Maybe. your 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 distance is uh, <laughs> not not is affected. Like I said, I took it out on Saturday. I rode it around the neighborhood. I was I was gonna drop by. You should, uh, but I didn't die. So give me give me a few weeks. I got all my parts ordered for my bike. I did try and start it. Uh, I, I think I'm good to go. Give me a give me a good weekend or two, right. and then we'll go. We'll I have go my son this weekend, so uh, and then the yeah, next weekend no, is in Mojave. Work stuff, and then Mojave, Mojave, dude. Okay, so transit. Whoop whoop whoop. whoop. Segway. Mojave Trail. I just I for some reason I was thinking we had two weeks. We have a week and a half. Yeah, we yeah. Have, it's a week from this yeah. Thursday. Yeah. Shit. It's less than I a got, week and a half. I got half. the time off and everything. Like, I, a week and I, me too. I have a hotel room. I'm, too. I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm I'm all hopped up and ready to go. I'll meet uh, you guys at Friday morning. What? Yeah, bitch. I, I get, uh, there's oh, a... I, I just took the time off, man. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> he did. Hey, uh, did you take the Wednesday, Tuesday, Dude, Monday? I, I've got... I got you did it right. I, you got Wednesday I, and Monday. I, yes, I got the Wednesday before <laughs> and the Tuesday after, man. I have... He can plenty go tomorrow. Of, I, got, I got plenty of prep time and recovery time after the fact. Yeah, you're doing so, it right. You're doing it right, I'm bro. doing it right this time. Uh, Susan wants to go out Wednesday night. I was I was almost considering. Uh, like, I won't make it to play golf on Thursday. Oh, what? <laughs> Where's their golf? Are you talking in uh, Laughlin? Yeah. Oh man! I, and look, I earned I earned some credit uh, this past weekend. So uh, let's let's talk uh, your about zone that. two cut over. <laughs> zone. Well, you don't know what zone it was. I Jose. don't. I don't know. But Monty I does. Monty knows. <laughs> That's right. My <laughs> wife knows. Um, uh, but let me know, uh, Case, if 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 yeah, I'm Thursday's trying to open. work out the details. I'll let you know. Okay. But it would require going out Wednesday night no. or you know Thursday morning, whatever. Yeah, I yeah. don't. I don't. I don't think we'll be able to go out until Thursday. So I'll find out for sure though, because um, my uh, my wife's can't. I don't think she can get the time off work. You're you're bringing the fam. I'm bringing on the whole trip. Yeah, bringing mm-hmm. the girls. Okay. Uh, but we are we are booked for a hotel room Thursday night at the Avi, and then I am booked on Thursday night. At everybody the that has registered for the trip should have already received the email with the deets on what. So how how look? I'll tell you, I'm pretty pumped on this trip. I you know even oh, yeah. with like the. I don't want to say it was like a negative. I mean, I don't think Jose's going. He's not registered. The previous trip, (laughs) the previous trip was rough, but the the temperature, everything, I think is going to be prime. I mean, it's it's ideal for this trail, and uh, I've always looked forward to this trip and this trail. And it kind of sucks that the the previous trip was tainted by extreme temps. Yeah, I don't. But we still, I we, still, I, we yes. still had a great time. We yes. still had I, I a great I wouldn't say it was tainted. And it was just def- difficult compared to what we've done in the past. Tainted. That's tainted. And the, t- the temperatures only became an issue towards when we got like uh, from the lava tubes on. I agree. I think I think that last day was extreme, <clears throat> uh, especially but like the Travelers that, Monument and Post Travelers Monument. It was. There, it, 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 there was no uh, relief or it, it just it was it was rough. Yeah, you know, again, because we had already gone through 100 miles or so of extreme temperatures and mm-hmm. whatever. But this time, I think it's going to be ideal. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be mm-hmm. perfect. The, the only concern I have and I haven't checked in the last couple of days is the um, 
potential for for closures, but we haven't had any rain in a while. No. So um, let me go. But to... we we do have uh, with with those closures in mind. We have an alt- alternative route. We, we'll, we'll make it through that trail. We we do, and um, we we had intended to pre-run this. We didn't. Uh, so we're gonna. It, it may be a game time decision, but we I think we'll be okay. Jose, say go for it. <laughs> hey, my bike's ready. You were supposed what to. Yeah, well, you were supposed to run it on your bike and just do it really quick because you have the bike that runs. <laughs> That's what I remember. Uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm counting the days every day. Like I, I okay. can't wait. No, hundred percent. Me too. Me too. So so there's an update. Kell Baker Road is now open. Seymour Road is closed until March of 2024. Um, what? Yeah. Um, so I'll I'll dig into more of these road closures. But you know we. Again, we've done this trail in the past with closures yeah. and figured out yeah, ways yeah, around, around or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah there, uh, it's funny we did that. We did that. We did this trip that one year where that whole ridge area wa- was washed yes. out and closed. And at the following year, we went back and like the whatever was the barriers that were there were like off to the side and we're like is that does that mean it's closed or it's open <laughs> and we ended up going through it and i was like well we didn't die so uh, i think we're it was okay. fine um and yeah. that's going the opposite way yeah uh th- but they've got they've got some updates here on the on the closures so i'll go through and map that out between now and next week but uh for those of you that have registered um you you should have all the information, and we will, as of right now, the plan is to be out, for, for at least for me, uh, to be out there Thursday afternoon as soon as Tammy gets Same. off work. Yeah. Uh, but, again, I've, I've earned some credit, so I might be out there – Early Thursday morning, maybe Wednesday night, if I can. Yeah. I'll, if, if, gonna, go ahead, Casey. If, if it's – Thursday, I'm going to try to get off as early as possible and get out there. Yeah, I've got the day off. So if, if Tammy can, uh, <laughs> if Tammy can get, if Tammy can, <laughs> if Tammy can Sorry. get, a, I don't know why that's so funny. If Tammy can get off work, whatever time Tammy can get off work. I mean, at this point, I'm at the, uh, I'm at the mercy of my wife's work in so many ways. The, uh, um, <laughs> but if she can get the time off work, then we'll take off as early as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, so for, for those of you that have registered, I'm looking at all of your names here, uh, feel free to let us know what your plan is, whether or not you're going to be, um, well, we're, we're starting the trail trailhead Friday morning, yeah, fr- Friday mm-hmm. morning, Friday morning at whatever time I put on that itinerary We're we're, uh, wait a minute. Are we talking about going into bullhead and stocking up, or you should be no, ready no, you by? Should be ready you go, should dude. be. Yeah, I think for the most part, people are going to be ready to go. But I think it was it was nine a.m. at the trailhead. I think. Yeah, meet okay. at the trailhead okay. at nine a.m. So you, we're we're breaking off. Yeah. Yeah. So if you need to go to the grocery store, get Better your ass the, out of the hotel at seven. Yeah. Because the the one year we did that, where we woke up, we're like, oh, let's go to the grocery store. It was eleven yeah. o'clock before yeah. we got to the trailhead. So. That's why I just put trailhead at uh, 9 a.m. Depart. Yep. To, we're ready to go at 9 a.m. So if you need if you need to get um, groceries or whatever, take off early. Uh, go do your groceries. Uh, I'll, I'll, I should have all of my stuff. I'll get all my groceries and stuff done before we leave on Thursday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Well, that is exciting. I am excited to go on this trip. Lord knows I need it. Um, the... Uh, the, for those of you that are going on the trail, uh, if you've registered, or even if you didn't register and you got the invitation, there is a link to a place where you can buy that hat, and uh, the hat that I'm wearing. and it's the hat that he's pointing to. The hat that uh, I'm pointing that to that you can't see you in no our, on a podcast. Unless you're this, one of the this hat. 10 or 12 people logged in tonight. Um, yes. the, uh, it's a nice hat. I like that hat. And the... Uh, uh, there's a couple shirts too for that trip. So if you want those, you can, you can order those online. Um, all right. Well, uh, scheduled I th- high of 80, low of 55. Yeah. It's going to be so nice. It's going to be so uh-huh. nice. I cannot wait. 
um, you're bringing you're bringing all the good photo stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we we need to we need to actually get like what does that mean? His his camera and oh, his all you know that lens I, uh, you know Fo- that lens photo. I use to look at Uranus. Yes, the the Uranus lens. Yeah. Said fo- photo stuff. My like. my anus lens. Um, <laughs> my my uh, we really because the group's a little bit smaller this time and it's it's uh, you know a Prime. good core group. Yeah, it, I think we need to really focus on audio. I mean, uh, video and photo content as much as possible. Um, I'm a photo guy. I'm not a video. I know. Guy. I know. I'm going to try to do some video. I think I might have some time to edit some video this year. So I will, uh, uh, I will try to take as much video <laughs> as possible. Um, but, uh, we will let you guys know how that trip goes. I, I can't wait for those of you that are coming. We'll see you. Uh, we'll see you on Thursday. Everybody else. Uh, we will. T- hey, uh, Mark just logged in. Mark. I don't know if you saw, hold on. I'm going to do this again. Uh, Mark, you're going to have to go back and listen to this episode where we talk about, the uh, adventure is out there, but I can't turn the damn thing on because it washes out the camera too bad. So uh, I talked about it about a half hour ago. So you can what if back. you switch the switch it on the wall? Yeah, put it where the trail chaser yeah, maybe, tarp is. Maybe I it's I'll a the, black black back background. Yeah, I, maybe that's not a bad idea. I'll try to move some stuff around for next week to see um, the uh, but. I, I had it over here on this side at one point. I thought about putting it back there. I actually had it propped up back behind Jose on that wall. But same thing. When you turn it on, even at its dimmest setting, it just blows out the camera. So I'll figure it out. Uh, all right, everybody. Well, thank you for tuning in. Thank you to the guys from Camacho for joining us. And uh, we'll talk to you guys next week. Thanks, everybody. See you.